Well, so, uh, I'm Rico, and I'm going to be playing Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped 105%, which is the full completion category. Uh, it requires getting every crystal, gem, gold relic, and power up. And I have two commentators with me. Hi, my name is Cookie. I'm also a Crash speedrunner. I have some experience with this game, not as much as Rico, so I'm excited to see what he does today. And I'm Murkas. I have uh, little to no experience with this game, but I have a lot with the remaster and other Crash games. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I think we're good to go, so... All right. Uh -huh. All right. Three, two, one, go. Good luck. All right. So at the very beginning of this run, there's something I would normally be doing a, during a PB attempt that I'm not doing here, and that's turning the sound effects off. Uh, so you're going to see this little blue like portal cutscene. Uh, this is basically, you know, the bosses in the game are like, you know, talking trash and dropping a diss track telling you how you're never gonna win. Uh, if you turn the sound effects off, those cutscenes just don't load. And over the course of the run, it probably saves a, like a little over a minute, but because it's a marathon and the run is like exactly the same otherwise, I think it's just more entertaining to keep the SFX on. Um, so this is the first of many vehicle levels. Crash 3 introduces a lot of vehicles compared to Crash 1 and 2. Um, so about half of the game is vehicles, and this is Under Pressure, which is the first of two scuba levels where you're swimming underwater. And the movement tech here is basically, if you mash X, Crash swims faster, and then when you spin, he also moves faster. So it's kind of just using both at the same time. Um, one other thing that is used in like many levels, because this game introduces time trials, which are basically every level, almost every level has to be done twice because of this, because you have to, after getting the crystal and the gem, you unlock time trial, which is just beat the level in a certain amount of time and you get a relic. Um, and there are some levels where we do what's called a one cycle, where you get the gem and the relic at the same time, which is not supposed to be like doable, like the devs intended you get the relics by themselves. Um, and in this level, it is possible to get the box gem and the relic at the same time. It's a little bit faster. I think it saves like 5 to 15 seconds depending on like what cycles you get. Um, it's very risky though, and it's very easy to mess up. Um, so I just didn't want to risk doing that uh, without setting up the proper cycle. Because if I fail this, it's like I have to do whole, the whole level again. It's like over a minute of time loss. So just better to just take the guaranteed like 5 to 15 seconds. Even if it's, if it's just in warp 1, this is already like a pretty type 1 cycle if you get messy cycles. Yeah, the the most cycles in this game are global cycles, so the, as long as the game is not paused or loading, they're running. And optimally what you do is before the start of the run, you do a death abuse to set up a very proper cycle here, and then you also turn the sound effects off so you don't have to worry about like loads of the, the cutscenes or anything. So, like, there's just too many factors for me to want to do it in a marathon setting. It's just very easy for it to go wrong. All right. Yeah, the cycles are, are a bit different than what I'm used to, so I feel very justified in my decision to not go for that. Uh, but, yeah, otherwise, um, just the, the each collectible in this game is the, the 25 crystals are... Just your reward for beating every level. They're like the purple item that you'll see that's on the main path. and They're the main progression item. You need five in each warp room to progress to the next warp room. Uh, the gems are received either by breaking every crate in a level or by completing a specific task. Usually it's just, you know, a, a special like death route or gem route. And then the relics again are the time trials. There are three tiers of relics. There's sapphire, gold, and platinum. I specifically need gold or platinum uh, because there is a 45th gem that you get for uh, getting every gold relic. So if I get a sapphire relic, I have to redo the level. And uh, yeah, that was the first uh, of the first level of this warp room under pressure. Forget how smooth that vehicle is in this version. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the remake, uh, a lot of the vehicles feel very different, and uh, the reception towards that is pretty mixed. Um, one thing I think is unanimously agreed amongst like the runners of the remake is that the, the fish vehicle is 
much stiffer in the remake compared to this. All right, so this is uh, the second vehicle. This is Pura the Tiger. This is also the first level where you play as Crash's sister, Coco. Uh, so this level is basically a successor to the Polar Bear in Crash 2 and the Hog in Crash 1. Uh, you can charge indefinitely by holding R1 or Circle. And ideally, I don't want to drop... Okay, I, <laughs> I missed a crate, so I'm just going to Death Abuse. You can one-cycle this level, but much like Under Pressure, it's very risky, so I'd rather just take the Death Abuse. Um, but yeah, so every time I drop a charge, it takes a little bit of time to go back to top speed, so I ideally do not want to drop it too often. And yeah, that, that crate is very hard to hit properly, so that one I'm not really surprised I missed. There we go. Yeah, sometimes you have to slow down just to like actually get these crates. Another thing of note that we'll see more in the time trial is that every time you jump, it saves, I think, a frame. So when I'm not trying to go for every crate, it's like ideal to just try and jump as much as you can. Let's slow down here because this level has been uh, not particularly lucky so far. <laughs> And th there is a trick here called Cuddle Skip, where if I jump off the roof of that last building in the right way, I can land so far that I just enter the portal, and that cute little cut Cuddle cutscene that just played just doesn't happen, and it saves like five seconds. Uh, on the gem pass, it's very easy to mess it up and miss the gem, so I didn't risk it there, but I'm going to try and go for it on this pass. Uh, it's a little awkward in Orient Express compared to the second Tiger level, Midnight Run. That one's a lot more consistent. So if I don't get it here, we'll have two more chances to see it later in the run. This is also the first instance of like one of the many like advanced movement techs in the game, which is zigzagging. So anytime Crash or Coco is airborne, or in Crash's case, in the middle of a slide, if you alternate diagonals, that's actually faster than uh, just like holding forward. So Coco doesn't really have a lot of movement tech. She can only walk. So for the very short time where you do that, it's ideal to just like jump and zigzag in the air. And then Crash will just be zigzagging for as much as I can. We'll see a lot of use of zigzag throughout the run, but it's very clear in the beginning of uh, these two levels. like. Because the only thing Coco can do is like walk kind of slowly. Yeah, here I'm going to try and do the cuddle skip. I, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, that one is very rough. And honestly, I'll take failing that over hitting the wall wrong and dying. So, Also, we get to see the cuddle and it's adorable. So, Yeah, most, most of these time trials are actually pretty trivial when you use the movement tech. So we'll actually see a fair number of platinum relics, which are just, again, like not needed but it just kind of shows how crazy the movement tech in this game can be. All right, so we're going to get to the first platforming level. Uh, this is Toad Village. So this is going to be the first uh, show off of the primary movement tech. So, okay, if my slide would work. All right, so this is the neutral slide jump. Uh, so if you're familiar with Crash 2, it's similar to the neutral slide spin where you uh, slide, let go of a di uh, directional input, and jump, and the slide momentum carries the jump. Uh, the big thing here is that when you get triple mask, your slide dramatically increases in speed, and that carries into the neutral slide jump. So that is going to be like the defining factor of most of the routing in this game, is just, I want to have triple mask as much as possible. And the nice thing about 105 is that almost every time trial gives you two masks. So if I'm in a situation where I take a stray hit, I can usually just like reroute and go to a time trial early and just get a triple mask from there. Uh, it's really nice because the routing in this game is so flexible that a lot of runners, including like myself, sometimes only use two splits for this entire like two hour run. It's also nice that it doesn't matter a lot, the, the order of the level, because when you exit the level, you come out exactly in the middle of the warp room every single time. Yeah, so it's not like Crash 2, where like you pop out of a certain doorway in the warp room, and then you have to take time to like go to a next one. So some of the optimization is you know just getting through the warp room as shortly as possible. In this game, like Cookie said, it just doesn't matter. I forget, there's no... like. Um weird mask stuff with it. you just go into the relic and then you can get two masks and then go out yeah. and you get both right yeah yeah so it's always possible to replenish masks usually. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so the reason why i'm asking that is because in the remaster it's very uh weird how you can do that in relics yeah 
Yeah, so this is the first of four jet ski levels. This is making waves. Uh, these are more or less auto scrollers. Two of them in later in the run, I think, are actually very interesting. This one is pretty boring, so this is a good spot for donations. Thank you very much, Rico. We have had $20 come in from Aishmo, who says, paying our dues for Nico failing to drive a snowmobile safely during an avalanche. And that was going to the Tetrio showcase as well. We have also had $20 from Tainted Tally, who says, as promised, here's the $20 for our snowmobile deaths in RE6. Best of luck to Rico and the rest of the night shift. We have also had $15 come in from Cascade Persona, who says, always happy to support a good cause and watch some speed runs. Crash 2 is my favorite Crash game, but I certainly won't turn down seeing some Crash 3. And we have had $200 come in from Jamie the Bunny, who says, Boggle, also trans rights. <laughs> Putting this to Coco in Crash 4, sorry for your frames, Cookie, but it's important. Boggle, back to you. Thank you, Jamie. Jamie is a very generous member of many different Crash communities and is one of my best friends. So, thank you so much for that donation. Also, Boggle. Yeah, so we're coming up to the end of this uh, uh, Crystal and Gem Pass, so making waves. Uh, the Relic, so most Relics in this game for gold are very lenient, and I honestly don't really have to worry that much about them. Making Waves is one of the most notable exceptions of that. This is actually a scarily tight gold relic, so if I miss like I ha like a large number of time crates, I could potentially fail this. It's very easy to miss a lot of boxes in the ramps in this level because the the level itself uh, has waves and they can fluctuate so much that when you go up a ramp, you can just go over a box super easily. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you can also go under them, as if the waves are bringing the ramp really low. There's only a handful of ramps in making waves that get affected by that, but like later jet ski levels, it's a problem with a lot of them. So it'll be a problem more like later on in the run compared to this level right now. Uh, but in the meantime, if there's any more donations, it's a this is a good time. No problem at all. We have five dollars from Dragon Blood. He says, "Go, Rico, you've got this, and don't forget." Boggle. We've also had five dollars from Marathon Man. He says, for a dollar, show me Rico. Best of luck to Rico and all my friends representing PlayStation at this event. Been a great showcase so far. Looking forward to the rest of this wonderful marathon that is going towards Crash in the Crash Bandicoot for Bid War. And finally, we have $25 from Lexi who says, in honor of Rico's run, I allocated this donation for Coco in the C4 run. Sorry, Cookie. Let's go, Rico. And there's a bit of an update for you on how that Bid War is going. Crash versus Coco for Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Uh, unfortunately, Coco's currently in the lead by quite Quite a significant margin, $320 to 55 Yes, exactly. <laughs> but there is still time for chat to change that if they want to. So do get your donations in. Consider putting it towards that bid war or any of our other open incentives right now. Back to you. Thank you, Lexi, for donating to Coco. Marathon Man, thank you for the donation and the message. But why did you donate to Crash? And thank you, Dragon. We love you, Marathon Man. <laughs> this is like an ongoing debate with me versus like the rest of the Crash community as to who's the better character, and apparently I'm the only one who likes Coco. And Crody. And Crody, and Crody, Crody. yeah, you're right. All right, so uh, a neat tidbit of the routing in this game and how flexible it is, a lot of runners choose to actually do this time trial for Toad Village much later in the run because it's one of the only ones that doesn't have a triple mask, so it's only really used to replenish your triple masks. Um, I didn't leave Making Waves with two masks, so I would have come here anyway. But if I had left Making Waves with two, I would have had the option to save this for, you know, like an hour into the run. But I do have specific backup saves in case, like, something happens with, like, a game crash, because this is not the most stable crash game. Uh, and those backup saves already have Toad Village completed, so I was just going to do this level anyway. But yeah, this is one of only two time trials in the entire game that is a platformer and doesn't have three masks. There's a handful of other ones where we won't get all three masks just for other reasons, but this is one of two where this is just not an option. I'd also imagine you just leave this one to the end because you just want to get rid of warp one as soon yeah. as possible. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of uh, argument for doing Toad Village later. I don't think there's another level, isn't it? Uh, it's dynamite. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Alright, so we're coming up on the last level in Warp 1. Uh, this is Boneyard, and we're actually only going to be doing the first visit right now, as opposed to the other four levels where we just cleared them out. Uh, this level has the Red Gem Path, uh, which uh, we need the Red Gem to complete it, and we don't have that right now. We get it in Warp 3, so we're going to have to come back for this. Um, this is the successor to the Boulder levels from the first two Crash games. Uh, the dinosaur is a bit different in that, unlike the first two games, he actually rubber bands. So if I go really fast, he will catch up to me. That's uh, both a positive and a negative. The positive being that I don't have to worry about him not breaking crates because he will always be on screen to break them. But the downside is that if I accidentally body slam or do anything that slows myself down, there's a very good chance that I'll just die. Uh, this grass is very good at slowing Crash down, so ideally I just always want to jump over it. I think one thing that we haven't touched is even if neutral slide jumping is the fastest form of movement, there's still some times where we want to take a, a slide spin over a, a neutral slide jump. Yeah, it's um, sometimes like with spacing, because you can't really slow down the neutral slide jump, it's better to just do a slide spin, or if you're going downhill, it's awkward to do a neutral slide jump, so slide spinning is still better in those situations. And you can zigzag slide spin, so you'll see like crash wiggle a little bit while I do them. Um, in that bonus round, we had the first instance of the glitch high jump. This is something that's in both Crash 2 and 3, and they actually carried it over into the remakes intentionally, where if you do a spin while you're doing a crouching jump or a slide jump, you actually go a little bit higher. And I was able to use that plus a body slam to get to the top of the like the metal stack without using the arrow crate, and that just saved a little bit of time. All right, that gem has a very unique uh, property. It's the only gem like this in a platformer level where it homes in on you when it shows up, so I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to go out of my way to break the left crate. I just let the dinosaur do it, and the gem went in and just collected itself for me. All right, so we're coming up to the first boss fight. This is tiny. Uh, I'm actually going to intentionally wait a little bit to skip this cutscene, because if I skip it too fast, the music doesn't play, and the music is really good. So he always jumps a certain number of times per phase, and I can just use the invincibility frames of spins to just hit him immediately. Also, if you stand in this top left corner, the lions just cannot hit Crash. Fun fact about that, in the remake, they actually throw cheese at you if you do that, because uh, it was so well known in this original, so uh, they kind of made it a... It's a little, a little easter egg. Yeah. The cheese is my favorite easter egg in the remake. <laughs> it's a pretty good one, honestly. The cheese can also push you out of the corner and kill you. Uh... I've never had that happen to me. Like, I've heard horror stories, but it's never happened to me. I think it is just if you're doing nothing with the controller, right? Because if yeah, yeah, holding you're holding up left, moving. we don't. Yeah. yeah. So that was the first power-up. That's another change that Crash 3 brought in compared to 1 and 2, is that beating bosses gives you power-ups. That power-up is the super body slam. It's largely pretty uneventful. Oh, wow, well, I just got button glitch. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that's a good time to explain that. Um, so button glitch is something that happens if I slide spin and jump on the same frame that I enter a portal, I don't lose control of Crash. And it's actually very nice for time trials because if I button glitch a level and then um, step on the button of another level, I will be comparing to the time trial times of the button I stepped on. So say like I entered you know level 8 here and I got button glitch and I stepped on this level, level 6, I would be doing level 8 but comparing to the time trial times of level 6. And that's very useful for making a lot of time trials just much more lenient. It's not mandatory at any point in the run, but it's a nice, just like, comfort zone sometimes. But I got into the Crystal Pass, so it's just useless here. But it might come up later in the run. I'll almost certainly get it a couple more times. Um, otherwise, uh, the only other noteworthy thing about this level is that the two Triple Masks in here are actually among the least useful in this warp room, but I still do this level first, because just the way that strats are done with every level in this warp room. This is the only one where I can conveniently use it as a backup if I lose a crate in another level. Oh no, the, fr the frog. The frog. I, I feel like they intentionally put that nitro there because there's no reason for it to be so off the path aside from the frog can jump into it. 
Uh, but yeah, so like doing this level early means that if I take a stray hit or a death anywhere else in the work room, I can just come back to this time trial when I need to. Neat little trick there to skip waiting for that metal staircase. Also, they try to trick you in, into like walking off the bottom crate. Um, other than that, there's not too much with the, less of the rest of this level, so we can probably fit in a quick donation or two. No problem at all. We have had $5 from Dil Wingo. It says, best of luck, buddy. And also, give me your shoes. Thanks, Dil. <laughs> and we've also had $20 from Crash6351. It says, go, Rico, go, Rico, go. And uh, Cookie, you'll be pleased to hear that one's gone towards Coco as well. My friends know me. I still believe Cookie and me in shambles. Come on, guys, don't let's crash. Don't tell Rico. Oh, I got button glitch again. I'm I always get it on the level, like the passes of levels where it's not useful. All right, yeah. So this is Hang 'em High. This is by far the most important triple mask in this warp room. It's honestly one of the most important triples in the entire run. So this is one where, like, if I had taken a straight hit in G Wiz, I would have just gone back to G Wiz because this is very important to have because uh, you move really fast on these hang rails with triple. And I got a stutter, so never mind. <laughs> Now you get to see the excitement of the hang rails. Yeah, now, now you get to see how it is when I don't have triple. That's a bit unfortunate. This game is not the most friendly with inputs, especially because it, it's a 30 FPS game and it does have a tendency to lag. So there, I just got like a stutter input and kind of just fell. It's not only the fact that you move super fast on the rails, it's also because if you don't have triple, you have to stop to break every box. Yeah. And this also means that after this level, I will be going to G-Wiz because I would like the Triple Mask in the next level as well, Toon Time. Alright, that was a spin bounce to blow up a TNT without getting hit by it. Uh, TNTs in the original Crash games have expanding hitboxes, so if you hit them in a way where you just get out of the way of the explosion, you can just do that and... Not have to worry about waiting to blow it up. Probably a bit risky to do when I don't have a mask, but it's fine. That was another use of the glitch high jump, just to skip using that arrow crate. You can spin on these, like, trampoline things, and uh, just you don't bounce off of them. I waited that out just because while that guy's swinging his sword, you can't hit him, and normally I would just take a damage abuse there, but I can't do that when I don't have a mask, so I just waited it out. Uh, one thing that was uh, very slightly visible in like that last side-scrolling section was the yellow gem in the background. That will be important in a couple levels from now, so we'll just get back to that later. But in the meantime, I have to go back to G-Wiz to replenish masks for Tomb Time. Routing is almost one of the coolest thing about this game, I think, like how flexible it is depending on like how the run goes. Yeah. There's like a couple spots where it's pretty rigid, like the entirety of Warp 5, you just do the same regardless of what happens, but like the first like two Warp Rooms are very flexible. Three is like kind of like half and half where like I'll usually end up doing the same thing, but if, if I just forget to do something, it's pretty easy to just make it up. And then four is probably the single most flexible Warp Room. I don't think anybody does it the same. Like I based I based my warp my entire route in this game off of the record by Burgerlands and even then I'm pretty sure his he does level splits and his split entire like section of splits for warp four is like the first level and then warp four lol. Um, otherwise, again, like there's not too much going in this time trial, so we can probably fit in a few more donations. Thank you very much, Rico. We have had five dollars from McCrody, who just says Merkaz the emote. <laughs> We've also had $5 from BFAR2 says, It's great seeing crash speed runs during ESA. Rico, GLGL, FRFR, no cap. Doing my part to make sure the ACG King plays Coco. And with that in mind, we have had $105 come in from Stump, who says, Good luck, Rico. Crash 3 hype. Here's a dollar for each percent towards Coco in Crash 4. Rico, bless on the rest of the run. Thank you, everyone. I've lost hope. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're losing this battle, Kirky. Really? It's me inflicting my will on ACG after not running it for like two years. 
Alright, so this is Tomb Time. This is the only level in the entire run, if I'm not mistaken, where we cannot get the box gem on the first pass. There's just too many things in this level. Like, half of the crates are locked behind a purple gem path, and much like the red gem, that is a purple three. Uh, so we'll just be doing an any percent pass of this level first. And yeah, um, I guess something of note is that th this level is home to the single hardest one cycle in the entire run. It's the only one that I am personally not capable of doing without Bunny Glitch. It is very possible without it, but it's extremely tight. And my movement is just not consistent enough for it. Um, so whether or not I do that one cycle will depend entirely on if I get Bunny Glitch for this level. Otherwise, I think we got time for one more donation. No problem. Five dollars from Agratham, who just says Tech Plat, and that's <laughs> that one has gone towards Crash. Agratham, why? But thank you. All right. So the next level we're doing is Midnight Run. This is the second of two uh, per levels. And this is the one that has the much more consistent cuddle skip, so ideally I'll get it at least once. Right? I believe. I never doubted. That's how math works. Yeah. I have a, I have a degree in math. <laughs> Alright, so I'm actually going to damage abuse at the very start. Th again, this game is very weird. Uh, for some reason, if you just enter, if you enter certain parts of this level with two masks, sometimes crates just spawn below the floor, and I can't get them. Uh, and I would just prefer if that didn't happen. So, and I like I don't need the masks at this point. For the rest of the warp room, uh, the masks are just going to be stuff I use for strats, and then I'm going to just replenish them before the next warp room. All right. So this mask, though, I want to try really hard to not lose because I needed to do the next cuddle skip. Slow down here just in case, because sometimes that top crate doesn't to break. And like I can once I go to this level, it's really generous, but I just would rather not if I can help it. Pretty much every quote unquote normal one cycle can be done on levels that don't have a bonus. So levels like pretty much every vehicle level and every underwater level. Alright, that that might not be enough. Yeah, okay. I barely missed it, but uh, we're we're going to be able to go for it again because we're about to come back into this level. Uh, the way that one works is that I use the mask to jump off of the guy holding the two like buckets of rice. And from there, I can jump onto the two flagpoles on the side. As long as you hold diagonal upright and jump, usually you can land on the wall. Uh, and if you do that, you'll just go right into the portal. And you always hit the gem as well. You can still see that you landed closer to the yeah. portal and... Um like what he was trying to do at least and we'll hopefully see it here but uh it is a bit tricky to pull off so definitely a lot more consistent than the one in orient express but still can just go wrong once in a while and th there's two masks in this level but the second one is a bit out of the way so i'm only going to grab it if i feel like i need it i might just grab it to be safe because a, lo a lot of times the enemies at the end can be just very cluttered and be hard to get through all of them. Okay, I'll go ahead and get one. Only like a couple seconds. I've always found it so weird how this time trial is so super lenient compared oh, okay. to. Oh, I just didn't get the jump. Alright, I basically showed off like the idea, like if I had just gone a little further on the first pass, like I just would have gone around right into the portal. How could you skip this? Look, yeah, so cute. You can't skip it in the remake, so... so if anyone wants to find that, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright. I think we got one more crystal in this warp room, and it's uh, Hog Ride. So this is the first of four motorcycle levels where the gimmick with these is that it's a race and to get the crystal I have to win the race. Uh, these, this is also one of the levels where you intentionally one cycle it. Um, the time trial here is tight enough that to get the gold you have to break most of the crates anyway and in an any percent pass of this level you can carry the first turbo boost through the entire level. So it's just 
faster overall to just get the crystal in the first pass and come back for the gem and relic. I also think that makes the time trial more consistent because you can almost always get like a 40 second time by just getting every crate. And the gold is like a 41, 36, I believe, something like that. All right, that's a little gross. Oh, no, I saved it, it's fine. If I go into this dirt on the side, I lose the turbo boost. If I, you know, crash into a police car, I lose the turbo, so I'm trying to not do that. This saves like five seconds, I believe. But it's just like, this is nice, <laughs> just being able to carry this through the entire level. Love how we were just holding a wheelie while like, scraping into police cars. Yeah. <laughs> just like the 50s. <laughs> also love the little scooter sound it makes while riding like a... Yeah. Motorcycle. So, this is the second boss, Dingo Dial. This is a really cool, intricate boss fight where you have to like bait him into destroying the crystal shield surrounding him and then you go in and hit him. Or, if you have Glitch High Jump, you can just do this. Yeah, so uh, the Glitch High Jump is like most notable in this fight because it just completely trivializes it. Yeah, so that was Dingo Dial. Uh, shout out to Hypno Shark. Rip Hypno Shark. See how happy the penguin is jumping on him. <laughs> so uh, the power up we get from Dingo Dial is much more useful than the one we get from Tiny. That is the double jump. It's going to be very useful for basically the entire run, but it will be especially useful for the time trial in Hang 'em High, which we'll get to after this time trial. Uh, while I'm doing this, we have time for probably one donation. No problem. We have had $10 from Anonymous, who says another uh, sorry, another year, another amazing week of ESA. Happy to help get rid of Alzheimer's, trans rights, and that one's going to Coco as well. I like these donators. Yeah. You're lucky you're anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um... I'll, I'll, you'll notice throughout the run, I'll pre periodically check my crate count. Uh, it's just really nice to know, like, you know, having certain crate counts memorized and I'm like, oh, I missed a crate, I have to reset the trial. Because there was one crate where I didn't see it break, but I checked the crate count and it said that I got a, I had five there, which is correct. So, uh, but yeah, that was the hog ride uh, one cycle. So we got the box gem and the gold relic at the same time. So the last thing we're doing in this warp room for now is the time trial in Hang'em High, and this has the first trick that I would say is uh, genuinely kind of scary. I don't think it's hard, but it's a very easy one to mess up, and every time I fail it, it loses like a minute. Uh, for clarification, this is a very volatile category. My PB in this category is a 207.21, and my estimate is a 220, and I did not feel comfortable having anything faster than that. So here we're going to do a trick called Yellow Gem Early, which uh, exactly as it sounds like, we're gonna get the Yellow Gem Early. Um, normally to get the Yellow Gem, you have to have 10 relics, and then there's an alternate button in the sixth warp room that's marked as level 27. That's just an alternate entrance to this level, and that's how you normally get the Yellow Gem. Um, but we can use the double jump along with the, the neutral slide jump to uh, get into the back end of that passageway without having to go down and get the, uh, the secret entrance. And I think it saves, like, about a minute, so. This is one of the parts of the run where I'm gonna have to focus, though. See how big the difference between the hangrails with the mask and without a mask was now? It does. It's still right. a little bit more. All right. Awesome. Just... Not die. There we uh, go. Nice. Let's go. Yeah, so there's a couple layers to how that trick works. So first off, I have to make sure the camera is not pulled back, which is why I like moved forward a little bit, because if it's pulled back, uh, the, the camera lock on the next part is not consistent. 
So what I have to do is I have to do a neutral slide jump followed by a double jump to land on that platform, which takes you back to the main portion of the level. And then while I'm on that platform, I have to lightly tap up and down on the D-pad. And it has to be very light uh, because that locks the camera onto Crash. And if I don't get that camera lock, uh, the yellow jump doesn't load in. So, um, and then from there I have to grab the gem and then jump back and then reach the end portal before I run out of time for the time trial. Even if you don't die while doing that, even if, if you get just the camera not moving, you still don't have enough time to get the gold relic and still attempt the, the jump a second time. Yeah, with, with, uh, without button glitch you can only go for that once before you have to reset the trial. With button glitch you've got like a good like three or four times. Alright, so this is Dynamite. This is, as far as routing goes, one of the most interesting levels in the run. Um, so, one thing here, this is uh, Baby T. We're gonna hatch him here, but we're gonna get him later just because waiting for him uh, wastes time. And he's not that much faster than the neutral slide jump. I actually think optimally you leave him behind, but that requires having like extremely good movement. So, most people just use him anyway. But he's very uh, Crash 1 esque where you just jump and zigzag with him. All right, so you'll notice I skipped a checkpoint, and that's because I'm going to be backtracking because I also skipped the yellow gem path. Um, there's just a lot going on in this level, um, so the, the, the route will make sense uh, further down. But I'm going to come down here and break this checkpoint, and I'm going to start my backtrack. And then uh, while I'm doing this backtrack, we can fit in one donation. It's a pretty long level. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, Rico. We have had $20 from Silkadoom, who says, Sorry, not sorry, Cookie. You've guessed it. That one's gone to Coco as well. And a quick update on that bid war. It is heating up, but not in your favor, I'm afraid. Coco is now well in the lead with $485 to crashes 60. I'll be honest, I didn't think I was going to have this much influence on the bid war, but I'm here for it. Thank you for the donation, Silga. All right, here's Baby T again. Again, like it's it, it's not worth grabbing here because I'm go about to get to the yellow gem path. Yeah, so this yellow gem path, again, you need the yellow gem from Hang 'em High to unlock it. And the way the devs intend you to do this is that the fifth power up is the running shoes. Uh, and that's supposed to be what makes the time trials in the platforming levels possible. So the idea is that you beat the final boss and then like afterwards you start clearing out all the relics. Um, obviously that wastes a lot of time because we have to go all the way down to the final boss. We'd have to visit this level again. And the running shoes are not faster than the neutral slide jump unless you have really good zigzag. Um, so we just like don't use them. Alright, so I need, did a neat little trick there where there was a reinforced crate that you normally have to break with a body slam underneath two TNTs. Um, if I move far away enough from the TNT while it's counting down, it will deload uh, that crate and just... it just gets broken without a body slam. All right, so the reason for this routing is that that checkpoint that I broke has to be the last checkpoint I break in the level for something I'm gonna do after I break, after I get the box gem. So that's the yellow gem path gem, and then I just have to clear at this level. 74 crates at this point is correct, so I have everything up to this point. And then um, when I finish the bonus, we'll have 99, which is, again, correct. All right, so uh, I like to describe this bonus in two ways. Uh, the first thing is that, uh, for whatever reason, it is uh, gratuitously blue, which uh, I'm down for because it's my favorite color. The other thing is that I feel like this is the bonus where uh, they were in the middle of the development and they're like, oh, we need something for the super body slam, so we're just gonna put like a million body slam crates in here. And here, here it tells you to use the Super Body Slam if you didn't figure it out by this point. Uh, also, uh, let's see if I can get this, it's kind of cool. Nice. Yeah, for, <laughs> for some reason, uh, the, bo the bonus platform moves down low enough that if you're just holding down, the, the dinosaur comes out early. It doesn't affect anything, it's just kind of funny. Also, there's like an infinite number of Triceratops in that cave, so I have no idea how big the cave is. There's siblings. Yeah. You can actually have him pop out in like while you're entering the bonus. It's a lot more finicky, so I didn't go for it. Uh, but you can have three tri Triceratops pop out. So I grab the box gem and immediately death abuse, which takes me back to the gem path, because uh, there is a very odd secret in this level that's not really intuitive. But if you grab this pterodactyl instead of dying, we get a very secret level.
Uh, there's two levels like this in the run, and this one is Eggie plus Rex. It is the only level in the entire game that has no crates. So it's just the time trial and uh, getting to the end. And the point of this one is that it's supposed to be a side-scrolling platformer with uh, Baby T. But again, waiting for him to hatch wastes time, so we just use neutral slide jump for a little bit. But after this point, I do try to hold on to him. If I lose him, I can uh, just do the time trial perfectly fine without him. Uh, this one's very generous due to a glitch in uh, the NTSC version of the game, which uh, I'll explain a bit more in uh, the next level after this. What do you mean it's not intuitive? It was totally obvious that you were going to die to that pterodactyl and yeah. take you into a secret level. There, there was one time, like right when the remake came out, where I was discussing how like that's not a particularly well-designed secret because there's like no indication that it's there, and someone in my chat was trying to tell me that. It's like, oh, it's like it's like more off pa off the path, so you have to go out of your way to get hit that by that pterodactyl. And I like went into the level, and I was like, no, it's just on the normal path. Like, there's, there's no indication that that pterodactyl is different. Maybe right. it has some facial features that you yeah. can see. Uh, <laughs> the nice thing about that secret is that you actually don't need it for a hundred, like for the true ending. You can get a hundred percent, which is not a hundred five percent, but you can get the true ending without that level. All right, so this level is Road Crash. I mean, I, I don't know how to describe this level. It's just kind of very long, very dull, very boring. Like, do you guys have anything to say about it? That's pretty much eh. Yeah, it's, it's just here. Yeah, so the, the, fir the first bit of it is going to be a little, you know, grab. I don't know, there's no turbo pads. Um, the police cars don't really do anything. The night sky is kind of pretty, though. There's one put to grab. There is one for fruit to grab, but that's for Crash 4, not for this. Um, I don't know, guys. I just, I just really don't like this level. I, I don't want to play it. Let's just do it another one. So this is the other super secret level. Um, yeah, yeah, Crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you hit that alien sign, you get taken to uh, Hot Cocoa. So this is the level where the glitch I mentioned in Eggie plus Rex is very important. So in, it's also the reason, the biggest reason the NTSC version is most optimal. Um, so there's a glitch with this and Eggie plus Rex, um, I don't know how I didn't die there, <laughs> um, where there's, these two levels are supposed to have their own time trial time, so the gold for this level is supposed to be like 30 seconds, but the bug makes it so that I am actually comparing to the time trial time for Road Crash, which is a minute and 20. So because of that, you can one cycle this level, and it's very generous, whereas on the PAL version and the Japanese version, you cannot. Um, so that alone, like, is very significant in this being optimal on NTSCU. The other thing that makes uh, NTSCU optimal, at least over PAL, is that the PAL version actually removes a lot of mass crates, so even though Crash's movement is actually buffed on PAL to compensate for the lower frame rate, it's still faster to play NTSC because you get more triple form mass, which is still the fastest form movement in both versions. Uh, the Japanese version also has, like, slightly slower loads, so... Yeah, there's a lot of weird things that play up to the NTSC version being fastest. Uh, but yeah, so this is the only level in the series, like the trilogy, that is non-linear. It's kind of just open, and the way it works is that you're actually warped into the level at the start, and you need to find the nitro detonator to unlock the exit. Cookie, you told me that works. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's supposed to be like the sun's reflection, but I can't stop thinking that it's like lava. It does kind of look like lava. Yeah. Okay, that time it worked. That cr that crate likes to troll me. Like very notoriously, a lot of times when I run this on my own stream, like it could take me a good like five tries to get that crate. I, I don't even know why. It's just it's supposed to be like you just hold forward and like dive deeper. Sometimes I don't go low enough. Sometimes I go too low. I don't know. I actually like most of this level. Like this is a pretty disliked level casually. I think design wise, it's really cool. But that that crate is a meme. But yeah, no, the, the path I'm following is very specific. You kind of just like get to the nitro detonator as quickly as possible and then clear out the rest of the level. Like when you're playing this casually, assuming you're not doing the one cycle, you get like two or three checkpoints. Yeah. And it's pretty much you choose when to break the checkpoint. Yeah, so every crate that is not a time crate in this time trial is a checkpoint. Uh, it's, it's a very unique level in that sense. Also, every crate, every time crate's a two crate. All right, that's uh, that's like probably the scariest crate next to the one underwater. Uh, but yeah, no, that was a very good hot cocoa. So yeah, to em em emphasize the glitch, we got the platinum relic, which is it's 
If there's any Platinum Relic you get on the NTSE version, it's this one and the one in Agapus Rex, because the glitch makes both of them extremely easy. Uh, but yeah, that was one of the hardest levels in the run, and it went very well. Oh. Alright, so after that, we're going to go into Road Crash for real. Oh, there, I got button glitch again where it's not useful. I've gotten it three times, and they've all been Crystal Passes. All right, so Road Crash, much like Hog Ride, is a level where I'm going to just get the crystal by itself on the first pass. Uh, Road Crash is unique in that every single crate becomes a time crate in the time trial. And again, it's tight enough of a gold relic that I have to break most of them anyway. So it just saves time to get the crystal on the first pass and cut some corners and then just get every crate on the second pass. And again, I think much like Hog Ride, it actually makes the time trial more consistent. I think casually this is one of the worst uh, gold relics to get. Like when you're first playing the game, I think it's also like one of the hardest like levels to beat because it has a requirement to beat it in terms of like getting first, and getting first is actually not trivial. Yeah, this uh, is like one of the most punishing levels. Like, if there's any level in the game that I think would roadblock like a casual player from finishing it, it's this level. Yeah, for sure. Um, I cannot afford more than like maybe one big mistake before the race becomes unwinnable. And like Hog Ride is also like that, but Hog Ride is significantly shorter. This is a very long level, so making a big mistake is very bad. It's probably a good time for some. If you have any messages, sir. Yeah, no problem. Let me tell you about an upcoming bid war for, in fact, the next game after this run. Uh, it's going to be Mario Party Superstars, and chat, you can choose the character that's going to be uh, in that run. At the moment, in the lead is Waluigi with $170. Just behind is Donkey Kong on $155.01. So just a $15 donation can snipe that one and put Donkey Kong in the lead. Yoshi's just a little bit further behind on $131, and Daisy is on $40. So if you want to potentially change the character that's going to be used in that upcoming run next. Now is the time to get your donations in. Return to monkey. I don't know, we stand Waluigi in my household. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Waluigi, best <laughs> character. Waluigi or Daisy, but Daisy seems to be pretty far behind, so we'll, we'll back Waluigi on this. So if you notice that uh, there's some boxes there, and that's because I think Road Crash is the only yeah. uh, motorcycle level that's a loop. Yeah, so like the other ones have designated starts and ends, but Road Crash actually goes back to the beginning of the level. Alright, so yeah, this time I'm gonna go for the crates. Again, like this one's it's not too bad. It's very consistent when you go for every crate, but it's also like if I miss one I have to have to start over. If I accidentally hit a like a car or something. And I do believe the time here is a 120 something? Like a 120 70, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's right. pretty tight. Like when I do this, I usually get like 118, 117. It is one of few relics that we're because uh, a lot of the relics are or some of the relics are the same in like the OG version and the uh, remaster. And this one was actually changed, I think, six seconds. I think it's a 126.70. Yeah, it, uh, it's a lot more generous in the remake. The remake. Yeah, most of the platforming levels in the remake have the same times as the original, but because the vehicles handle very differently, they changed all the time trial times in the remake for most of the vehicles. And a lot of them end up being much more generous as a result. 17 is correct there, so we're on a good track. Uh, no, one thing I know is that the turns in these levels are so tight that I have to drop these turbos. It's like, there's no way to carry them throughout the level. I'm pretty sure the task of this game also just drops the turbos. So this is, there's no way to actually carry it. It's just far. a pretty awkward spot where pretty much you just have turbo not even for a second. Because yeah. after it you just have a tight curve. Yeah. And this one, like, I use a visual cue, like, when that sign spawns in, I drop the turbo, and that's usually works pretty well. The 109 there is very good. I, I've gotten this gold relic when, like, having a 111 at that time freeze, so. Yep. That was actually really close to a plat. I think the plat's, like, a 117, like, 6x or something. You see how, like, smooth that level was, and that was still not too far off of failing, yeah. per se. Only like one big mistake would do that. All right, so uh, because of doing, you know, Aggie Puss and Hot Cocoa, I am 
quite short on masks, so we're going to be going into the time trial in Dynamite to replenish those. And like I mentioned at the beginning with Toad Village, this is one of the only triples that uh, does not, or the, one of the only time trials that does not have a triple mask. And I'm going to try really hard to not take a hit there because I really do not want to reroute considering the level that I'm doing next. Uh, otherwise, not too much with this time trial, so I'd say go ahead and uh, read any donations. We have had a $10 anonymous donation. No comment on this one, but it has gone towards Waluigi, putting Waluigi now $25 ahead of Donkey Kong. So a nice thing about this time trial is that uh, Baby T just spawns already hatched, so I don't have to wait for him. Um, so there is a neat little trick you can do in this level that's not fast, but it's pretty cool. Uh, that I was considering going for, but I'm not consistent enough at it to want to try it. But you can actually carry Baby T past this point here if you properly space a super body slam. Uh, the game kind of freaks out and starts lagging a lot, and it's not significantly faster than just doing this on foot, but it's pretty neat because you're not supposed to be able to finish the level with Baby T. We love our mascot pets though. Should have been more Baby T. And should be good. Alright, yeah. So the next level I'm doing is Double Header. This is a very notorious level because at the start, uh, it can crash. And I do have backup saves in case that happens. It hasn't happened to me in uh, over a year, but this would be the perfect time for it to happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a very laggy level because it has a lot of like rain effects going on. So sometimes this is too much for the PS2 to handle. All right. I guess I should mention that I'm running on PS2, which is standard for most PS1 games because of the fast disk speed. It saves like five minutes in this run because there's just a lot of loads. Oh uh, yeah, so we didn't crash at the start, which is good, but there is a second pass of this level, so there's still a chance. Um, generally, if you have like a, like a latest model PS2, like a 90k Slim, which is what I have, it's much less likely to happen because it's the least laggy uh, model of PS2 for this game. Um, another thing I'm going to try to do, I actually wasn't paying attention if I was, but I'm just going to assume I was, uh, I was I'm going to try and manually destroy every Nitro in this level, because the Nitro detonator at the very end is kind of out of the way. I think you did with the triple pass. Yeah. yeah, 33. Yeah, I kind of, yeah, 34 is at that checkpoint is correct, so I have gotten all of them. All right, so there's a there's a pretty neat trick coming up here that I really like doing. I can get it. Yep. Yep, so in, in Crash 3, and in only Crash 3, this does not work in Crash 2, uh, if you buffer a jump when you land on a Nitro, you can also escape its explosion, because in Crash 3, it also has an expo expanding hitbox like TNTs. Um, I could have done a damage abuse there, but I do want to keep at least one mask for the level after this, so it's just kind of nice to be able to do that, and it just looks really cool. So, uh, the, These outline crates here sometimes like to not spawn in, and if that happens, I have to like go back to like the very beginning of the bonus and pray they spawn in. I'm just going to touch it. I've had it happen not spawn, and I went to the beginning of the bonus like three times and it still didn't spawn. Yeah, this, this level is just... Uh, one of, the, one of the biggest signs that many parts of this game are just held together with, like, paper clips and bubble gum. Um, as, as a note, this game was developed in less than a year, which is very impressive when you think about it. All right, yeah, so I'm going to take a damage use here. That, that's a little faster than, like, trying to manually jump on those nitros. And I only need one mask for the next level, so... Yeah, so you can see the nitro detonator is, like, all the way over there, but I have every crate broken, so I don't have to worry about going over to hit it. It's like one of the nice uses of masks that you don't need for triples. One thing I did notice, you said you're running on a PS2 because of the fast disk speed. Is there any reason why you're using an original non-analog PlayStation controller? Uh, this is just the controller I have that has the best D-pad. So optimal movement in this game is with the D-pad because like zigzagging has to be on like the 45 degree angles. So with an analog stick, you just don't get like realistically good zigzag. Um, there are actually a few levels where I would prefer to have an analog stick, like there's the airplane levels in the later warp rooms where it'd be super convenient to have them, but I don't have a controller with good enough D-pad and also analog sticks, so I kind of just, like, just deal with it. 
Uh, but yeah, optimal movement in this game is with the D-pad for anybody who wants to learn the game. All right, yeah, so this is Deep Trouble. It's the second underwater level. There are these vortexes that uh, you have to wait on. Uh, I can damage these through them, but there's a lot of them, and I only have so many masks. So I'm going to save these for the very end. Very glad I saw that life pop out of the crate because I wasn't sure if I broke all three of those. So this uh, this level also has the red gem. So there's going to be a bit of a backtracking. There's not a lot of backtracking in this game compared to Crash 2 or even Crash 1. Uh, but you saw there was like an outline crate to the right there. There's an exclamation crate at the very end of the level that triggers that. So I have to go to the end and hit it. All right. Okay, that's fine. I can get that crate out of the turn. Okay. I have to be careful to not lose this uh, fish mech because the crates that are hidden behind Coral can only be broken with it. Like that. Alright, so there's going to be three crates and an exclamation mark crate that I'm going to try and hit off screen. So that's one, two, three, and then yes. Yeah, so the exclamation mark went to the left, so I know I got it, and I can just head back to the bottom of the level. Get the box. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm used to breaking that, so... <laughs> Uh, I was kind of hoping I would hit that guy because it would save me the time of having to have Crash throw the fish. Alright, so here I can try and do this. Nice. Again, expanding hitbox, so if you properly space a spin, you can get out of the range of it. Maneuvering around in this levels are way harder than it looks to you. Get stuck on literally everything. <laughs> yeah, if Crash is touching anything when he does a spin, he gets no momentum. But like, if he's like, you know, just in free area, then it's fine as well. So I have to like actually pretty properly time and space my spins. I was supposed to damage boost on like the earlier vortexes, and I just forgot. So I'll just do that one there. Uh, but yeah, that's the red gem. So once I'm done with this warp room, I'll be able to go back to Boneyard and clear it out. Yeah, so the, like the general structure of like this like routing in this game is like you do the first three warp rooms and then when you finish the third warp room, you just go back and clean up what you missed in one and two uh but yeah with that we go back to double header so there's another risk of a crash but it hasn't happened in how long right we pray i do have a backup safe for if it crashes here as well i actually specifically said that of last night when i realized i didn't have one and we're good we're crashless yep, yep. At least for this level. There, there's a couple other crashes that are way less common. Um, and one of them is technically completely controllable, but I do have backup saves for like entire warp rooms and like those specific levels as well, in case something goes wrong. Yeah, otherwise, uh, if there's any messages you have. No worries. Yeah, I'd love to let you know, chat, that we have a load of amazing prizes that you can win by donating. For example, we were talking earlier on about the Mario Party one that's coming up. Uh, did you know we have a prize of a Lego Super Mario 64 question block for a minimum donation of $100? But here's the thing, chat. Your donations are cumulative. You don't have to do it in a single donation. You could do maybe two donations of $50 or even 10 donations of $10. They will all count together at the end to make you eligible to win that prize. So do please keep your amazing donations coming in for Alzheimer Fondant. A very weird... Uh change they made in the remake of this time trial is that that third mask that I got that activated the triple, uh, it's just not there in the remake. And it, the movement tech in the remake is completely different, so that's not an issue. It's just kind of weird that I just took it out. All right, so we got one more level in this warp room. This is actually one of my favorite levels in the game. It's also one of the hardest levels in the game. Uh, this is high time. Uh, this is the first level with a death route. Uh, we're not going to be doing it in this pass, but the way a death route works is that you have to reach the death route without dying, otherwise it becomes unaccessible. Um, but otherwise, yeah, so the, that Death Route has the purple gem, so we'll be coming back for it after the the next boss fight. I don't know about Wrath of Cortex, but at least in NST, uh, they made the Death Route still be there if you die before the first checkpoint. Yeah, um, in the... In the original, if you die at all, even before the first yeah, yeah. checkpoint, it goes away. And that's something they fixed in, again, the remakes, like Cookie said. I don't. I also don't remember if it's like that in Wrath of Cortex. I believe if you die at all, then you have to re-enter. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The, 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 the way it works in the remake is very reminiscent of how gems in general work in the original Crash 1, where 
as long as you haven't broken a checkpoint yet, you don't have to reset the level. All right, so I, I slid under that reinforced crate, which let me break it without a body slam. That's actually one of the coolest bonuses. This entire level is just really neat. I think the Arabian levels are some of the peak level design in this game. All right, yeah, so this is not the best carpet cycle to get out. The triple at the end of this level is pretty nice, so I don't want to lose it. I moved fast enough, I should be able to catch the hangrail at the end. Oh. I caught most of it. I ended up going over those TNTs by mistake, but overall that was pretty good. Little fun fact, I guess. Uh, if you grab the mask that way in the remaster and you continue going forward, you just die. Because uh, yeah. it will trigger the animation over the hole yeah. perfectly. Which I have done more than once. <laughs> so this next boss fight, it seems like an auto-scroller, but there is a strat I'm going to go for that is both cool and does save about like four to five seconds. So I'm going to actually focus on this. I also waited a little bit there so the music played properly. So yeah, you can also like stand way back here. And then the beams that entropy fires left and right just don't hit you. Alright, so that's how the fight looks normally. And then we're going to hopefully speed this up a little bit. And this is going to require both of my masks. So it's good I didn't lose any in high time. Okay, so what happened there is that that, like... Like, when he slammed his tuning fork into the ground, that's an instant kill move that hits the entire arena. It's there to stop you from, like, coming over here too early. But if I damage abuse on the sphere right beforehand, the instant kill doesn't hit me. Oh, that was scary. Oh, I missed. Okay. Um, yeah, so every time he does the instant kill, he goes into the next phase a lot sooner. And it saves, like, two seconds per phase. Um... Yeah, my, my movement at the end there was a little awkward. So now we get to see how the fight looks normally. Um, that's a strat that I don't really think it's hard, but it's pretty easy to mess up because it's very finicky. And I haven't been the most consistent with it this week, but I really wanted to show it off, so I tried it. Well, you did, mostly. Yeah. Now you get to see both, uh, both ways of fighting. Yeah. Also, we get to listen to this song, which is pretty great. Probably also one of my favorite characters in Crash. Yeah, Entropy is, like, one of the most menacing villains, like, lore-wise. Gameplay-wise, his boss fights often leave a bit to be desired, but he is overall a really cool character. Entrance wants to talk to you. <laughs> we'll see more of Entropy in about 19 hours, Yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess we can could, we could talk about the plot of this game. Uh, so at the end of Crash 2... Uh, Crash and Koga destroy Cortex's space station, and it goes plummeting into the Earth and frees Uka Uka, who is Aku Aku, the mask's evil twin. And he enlists the help of Entropy to go to grab the crystals and gems in their original time period. So Crash and Coco are traveling through time to stop that from happening. And Entropy is the master of the time twister machine. Uh, so at the end of that fight, we got what is without a doubt the most powerful power-up in the entire game which is the Death Tornado spin. We'll see a little bit of it in this one cycle I'm about to do with High Time, but we'll especially start seeing it in Warp Room 4. Such a menacing name. But Death, Death Tornado, Death spin? tornado spin? Yeah. yeah. I thought you said, uh, I thought you meant Entropy, and I was like, yeah, kinda. <laughs> right, so I, I Death Abuse at the very start of this. That doesn't lock out the Death Route because I was in the time trial when I did it, and it sets up this cycle perfectly for the one cycle, because without this, it's just like not reliable. Um, hopefully this goes well. This is this is one that I kind of have down pretty well from muscle memory, but a single mistake can throw it off. Because if you have not noticed, most crash bosses actually have, or everyone that has the end in the beginning has like a pun on their name. Yeah, it's like entropy, or... neocortex, embryo, engine, entrance. Yeah. <laughs> And this is one of the time trials and one cycles that are uh, the same time in both the remake and the original. Uh, I do think it's a bit more lenient in the remaster. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Especially on the PC version. Yeah. Boom is a little shaky here, but I usually get this with like a five to six second window, so we should be fine. Those scorpions have the worst hitbox, by the way. 
They have the funniest sound, but the worst hitbox. Okay. Gonna improv a bit. Yeah, so it, this is a 104. So like, I lost like two or three seconds there and was still completely fine. My best there is usually like a 59. There's some like out of bounds stuff you can do where you go above the hangrails, and if you get all of them, you can save like five seconds there. But there's spots where you can just like randomly fall and die, so I'm not comfortable doing it. So I just take the five second time loss. It's funny because I think it's harder to like execute than the remaster, but the remaster is less lenient on the time because you don't yeah. technically have uh, more than like four seconds, I think. Yeah. All right, so I saved the deep trouble time trial for after entropy just because like it's not really needed at any point beforehand. So it's like it's a time trial that can be there if you need to re replenish masks, but otherwise like at this point in the run again, I'm still I'm not gonna be able to carry masks beyond this anyway. So I can use these to death abuse or death, damage abuse rather, um, which just saves time on some of these cycles. And this is there's like four masks in this time trial. <laughs> that question mark rate would be a mask if I didn't have two. Yeah, I can damage boost through that, and then I'll get a second mass coming up here soon, and then I can damage this again, and they can damage it more time. Oh, just this, just do a question mark. I did not know that. that yeah, like, in the remake, it, it stays a mask. But yeah, yeah. If yeah. you try to break it, it'll just make a funky like sound, and then just not give you a mask. And then I can damage boost through this one. I can get through the next Vortex without a damage abuse, but it's kind of scary, and I really don't want to risk it, because then I'll go back to the beginning of the level, so I'm going to wait it out. It also depends on where the fish is. Yeah, if the fish is like low, or like I can usually make it if the fish is high, then it's like probably not worth it. Um, but uh, this is a pretty lenient time trial. Like you can go pretty slow in this and get the platinum relic, so I'm not too worried about that. Although I'm trying to not get hit here because this last cycle is very annoying. All right, yeah, we're good. All right, so that is everything in Warp 3. So before going to Warp 4, we just have to clear out the two levels that we still haven't finished in Warp 1 and 2. So I'll be going back to Boneyard now to do the Red Gem in a one cycle. The fish vehicle counts as a shield, right? Like, as a mask. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah if, you, if, I get, if I get hit while I'm holding the fish, I just lose the fish. Yeah, I was just unsure if it was uh, the same. Uh, yeah. There's like a weird hitbox that like if you lose the fish, you can still get damage, even if, yeah. like, Crash is blinking, but you mm. don't have eye for it. There's also, like, there's, in the red gem path, there's a fish with, uh, between two vortexes. If you hit the fish while it's puffed up and then try to spin through the vortex, you get hit twice. It's, it's really weird. Um, so this one cycle is very movement heavy. Like, as long as you know the movement for this level, it's pretty simple. But, like, starting out, this is one of the ones that gives you runners the most trouble. Um, the, the triple mass that I'm going to get here is also very imperative. I think the time request to get here is a 140-something? 140-20, I believe. 20. Yeah. Yeah. If you're having a little bit of issues okay, when you're learning this game, or this category, uh, one thing you can do is delay this one cycle until you have the, the fourth power-up, uh, the bazooka. And you can start the time trial when you're down already and snipe the clock with the bazooka, which is like two seconds, three seconds. So I missed the two crates, so I do want to focus on this a little bit because it's going to be a lot tighter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just spoiled the fourth power up. That hill is very scary because it's very easy to get an accidental body slam, which usually just equals death. And in my case, it would probably equal failing the one cycle because I have two less seconds to work with. The floor can deload at that spot if you go too fast, so I intentionally slowed down a little bit there. It's a very funny way to just die and have to do the one cycle over again. Okay, we should be fine at this point. Should be good here, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good one. So my, my average there is usually a 136, so missing the two crate and 138 makes sense. Also, the noise that the Triceratops makes is just an entire mood. It's, oh, oh. So we have one more thing before Warp 4, and that is Tomb Time. And whether or not I do this in one pass or two is going to depend entirely on if I get Bunny Glitch. No way. Let's oh, go. Okay. No way. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do this. I was practicing this just in case I got it. So because this level has a bonus, the first thing you need to do is go to the bonus, do the bonus normally, and before the bonus, you can't break a checkpoint. 
Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the bonus death abuse. It will take me back to the start, but all the crates in the bonus are saved. And then I can just clear out the rest of the level. So the, the normal gold time here is 110, and the best I've gotten trying to do this one cycle is a 112. It just requires extremely good zigzag and consistent movement that I'm just not at the level at. It's like, it's a, it's a one cycle that like you should only do when you're at like the top level of runs. And you're willing to sacrifice your thumbs? Yeah. That was a little awkward. Also, um, ask like the remaster OG encyclopedia right now. Um, this is something you cannot do um, in the remaster at all. The same with Dynamite, that Rico did everything at once. Those are the only two things now, I think, that you I cannot do. Yeah. Oh, there, there's an alternate strat in the remake that involves like skipping this level and coming back to it later. Um, but yeah, so because I stepped on the G-Wiz uh, button, I am instead comparing to its gold time, which is a 122. So I have an extra two seconds, 12 seconds to work with. So this is still not free. Um, I can still mess it up. So I'm gonna focus a little bit. It's very important that I save that second mask. If I had broken that early, I would have lost the 12 second like window I had. A little more behind here than I want to be, but it should be fine. All right, 89 is correct. It's gonna be three crates here and then three in the path here. Good. A little nervous, can you tell? Should be good here. Yeah, no, we're, we're perfectly fine. I got seven seconds to work with. All right. Nice. It's really is like... Oh. That, that is always like a nail biter when I actually get button glitch. And like that probably, all, honestly, like aside from a couple of flubs, that probably looked really clean and I was still eight seconds off of getting that otherwise. So that's just a, that's just shows how tight that one cycle is. It's really really hard. All right, and that is the first three warp rooms done, and that is approximately half the game because there are three other warp rooms. So I did leave Tomb Time with two masks, so we'll be going immediately into Tomb Waiter. Uh, the more I think about it, I think this is my favorite level in the game, uh, at least as a speed run. This level is very cool. When it goes well, it's a pretty. Cool. <laughs> I got, I got. And if you have two masks as well. I got a Ricky bounce there. Shout out to Ricky who did the Jack Three, the Journey Back Gold Edition. That uh, if you land and uh, if you land and spin on the same frame, you get like a little hop, which is hugely inconvenient, and it's named after him. <laughs> All right, so I'm intentionally leaving this checkpoint until after this bonus because uh, there is a little like oversight that can happen here. So if I were to break that checkpoint before this bonus, I start this TNT timer, and then when I touch the platform, all of these nitros blow up, but they don't count for the bonus. So if I were to die before the next checkpoint, uh, they, those would essentially just be locked in the bonus and I couldn't get the gem. So, And you have to wait on this cycle anyway, so it's just better to grab the checkpoint after the bonus to stop that from happening. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is also one of the most important triples because not only do you get the movement buff, but the water stays down. And uh, Crash cannot swim without scuba gear, which makes zero sense in real life if you know anything about scuba. But, uh, you know, suspension of disbelief with a children's platformer. Um, but yeah, so I didn't have to worry about the water going up there at all. You mean, you mean I don't need to wear scuba gear when I take a bath? I mean, you could. So, the water, like, casually, this is probably, like, if not the hardest level, it's one of the hardest. But, like, the, the platform you can do, like, to just not wait on this water is honestly just one of my favorite things about it. Also, the... Wow, really? Oh. I'm surprised that killed me. Usually when the water starts going down, you're, like, immediately safe. 
it's usually a lot more lenient. Um, yeah. Like in, in the remake, as long as it's not like completely build up and like as long as it starts going down, you're usually safe. Or in the original, rather. In the remake, yeah. like if it touches Crash's ankles, he just drowns. <laughs> Or you, you know, get sucked to the bottom, like, to the yeah. floor of the, the ocean. The other thing is that in the original, when the mask, like, runs out, it waits a cycle before the water raises again. In the remake, when the mask runs out, the water raises immediately. All right, that was an awkward death. Um, I'm going to have to improvise. You can do to wait a relic and grab both. Yeah, it's a little bit out of That's the game way. plan. It's like, I'll, I'll miss a cycle in this uh, relic as a result, but... Yeah, so normally I'd be going to Sphinx in next, which is level 16, but because I don't have any masks, I'm just going to go ahead and do two later now. And normally I do skip one of the masks here, but I'll go ahead and grab it. So again, I'm going to Death Abuse to set up the cycles. Uh, as far as Gold Relic time goes, this is the most lenient one cycle. This is one of the two that I think... Okay. <laughs> this is one of the two that I think anybody could do, like, starting out. Optimally, it's... Uh, Actually, pretty hard uh, and really cool, but I'm not going to be able to show off the optimal cycle just because uh, many things have happened already. Uh, I think this level is like harder in like completing it rather than timing it uh, yeah. when starting out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like your threat here is not the clock; it's just not dying. Yeah, makes sense. Exactly. Yeah, so we're like a couple seconds behind, but like. Pretty sure the gold here is like a 145 or something, and my average is like sub 120. So you can get the platinum relic very easily doing this one cycle, which is most other one cycles are not like that. All right, so this is like I'm gonna wait here. I have to. So there's a crash that can happen here that is technically controllable. If this shield guy moves too far left or right and goes into the wall, the game like freaks out and just like hard locks. I've gotten it once ever, and I just wasn't paying attention. But like it is. A very real thing that can happen. You scared me there. <laughs> okay, I'm scaring myself too. Oh. It's fine. Why are you guys worried? Commentators freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not scared. You're scared. Because like just another day at the, at the job. Yeah. I've had worse things happen in this game, so. I'm pretty sure like if the water is fully up, if you. Don't you survive in the if you're standing on the first step? Uh, it, the second step, I believe. The first one, you'll still drown. All right, so this is Sphinxinator. Um, this one's kind of rude at the very beginning when I think about it, because there's just uh, this. I don't I don't know why. Um, that left path has nothing in it, so we're just not gonna see it at all. But it's like it's kind of like the level where that's supposed to show off the Death Tornado Spin, which I guess we've just been glossing over aside from mentioning that I have it. But yeah, the Death Tornado Spin just lets you like fly over everything, and that's why it's so powerful. I don't know why Crash Games does that, where they hide like some boxes like in uh, in the beginning that you can't see. Like uh, Rock to Casaba comes to mind. Oh yeah, that's, that's specifically. Yeah, in, in Entrance. Yeah. There's also uh, Toxic Tunnels in Crash 4, which we'll see tomorrow. It actually has that exact formation that we just saw in this level, where it's like you start the level and just walk backwards and then there's four hidden crates. All right. I believe Crash 3 copied Crash 4. True. All right, yeah, 46 is correct. That, that's one where if I move too quickly, some of the crates won't blow up, because the way TNTs blow up crates when deloading is a bit weird. Um, but 46 is correct. And we skipped the blue jump path because I'll be coming back for it for a one cycle. Um, normally, I wouldn't even have the blue jump at this point, but because I had to do Tomb Waiter first. So this, this is a neat little fun fact that's kind of useless uh, with this bonus. If you've seen a Crash 2 100% speedrun, you'll know about the box dupe in the level Cold Hard Crash, where you die after bonus while the ca uh, counter is still ticking, and it duplicates crates. Uh, you can actually do that in this level, but it is completely useless because it's oh. so close to the... Oh, did I... I think it's the life. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I might have had to do it there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's completely useless because there's not really much level after this. I didn't think I moved fast enough to, de to deload the life, but... You still need to get the exact same amount. I yeah, understand. yeah, yeah. If you go over the crate count because of a glitch, you don't get the jump. So, all right, one on one is also correct there. And 
and then uh, we'll be coming back here immediately for the one cycle, just, man, just to get it out of the way. At this point, like, masks really aren't going to matter until I finish the relic for level 18, so kind of, uh, that, I didn't even know what to do there. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're supposed to step on Tomb Waiter, but, like, I never get it here, and it's not needed, so I kind of just, like, brain lapsed. This, this one's is, lenient. Oh, yeah, two, th right? this is also, like, the one of the, the other two, the other of the two that you can do as a beginner. I actually think in real time it might be faster to do the one cycle than to like just do the relic normally. Like e even like not accounting for the gem. It's just like the, the level is so long and like the gem path is like a little less than halfway through it I think. You can also just add a little bit of spice and press uh, the bye bye blimps. I'd, I'd rather not. <laughs> I don't even know what bye bye blimps gold is. <laughs> Uh, like high it's forty. Thirty. It's like high forty. I, I, I get like a, I get like a one minute here because I don't break I, any of the time crates. So. Thirty nine in NSC, I think. It's definitely not a thirty nine because uh, the yeah I get the, I get the plat on like forty two this version. So really <laughs> interesting. I also I like to call this portion of the run like the the Egypt gauntlet because it's just three Egyptian levels in a row. At least we've already done the the two beginning platform levels of Warp 4, so yeah. losing a mask there doesn't matter. Yeah, so... I'm a little surprised that door closed. That was that was odd. Alright, so this is uh, everyone's favorite level to run. This is Tono Tales. Uh, the first pass of this level is three minutes long, and it's an, basically an auto-scroller. The second pass is uh, two and a half minutes long, or something like that. Uh, so uh, go crazy with donations or any messages because we're going to be here for a while. No problem. Thank you, Rico. We have had a $10 donation from Kibi Cole who says, Shout out to an absolute hunk of a man at the back row, Alapo. Thank you very much for that. That one's gone to uh, the Daisy character choice for the Mario Party Superstars All Boards bid war. Uh, just a reminder, that one is going to be closing at the beginning of the next one, so you have just under an hour to affect that particular bid war if you want to. And just a little update on one of our other incentives right now. For the Tetri IO run coming up later, the four wide combo battle, uh, that one's currently set at $1,418.90 of the $2,000 needed to see that one happen. So chat, if you want to put your money somewhere, that might be a good one for you to do. Shout out to Alapo. He did uh, the end scene trilogy version of Crash 2 Any% Percent earlier today on stream 2. Uh, there's actually a lot of Crash at this event. There's four runs total, so if you're liking this run or you just like Crash in general, this is the event to watch. Like, yeah, this, this ramp sucks. This is like the worst oh. ramp in the game. You have Cookie coming up tomorrow, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is normal with this ramp. One under, one above. There we go. First try. Yeah, no. yeah, Cookie coming up tomorrow and me on Friday on stream too. So if you want more Crash, then uh, you can see uh, more of us. Or if you want more of us, you can see more of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, the, the commentary for all three of those runs is just us. It's yeah, just us. Yeah. See more of the three of us together. Also, shout outs to our friends in the back that woke up at uh, like. 4 a.m. to yeah, so <laughs> watch like, this. So I'm from the United States, so this is like a normal time for me. This would be like 10, 11 p.m. for me, but like it's like 4 and 5 in the morning for everyone else. This is about normal for us, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're not so, really used to be awake like normal European hours, anyways. <laughs> we're we're really seeing uh, how waves can be uh, hilarious in these levels. I, I'm, I'm getting assaulted. Like, oh my god. <laughs> This, this is the worst place to die as well, because th this like side offshoot is not something you need if you're not going for the box gem. And as a result, uh, the, the gap between the checkpoint before this and the checkpoint after is huge. Like you can straight up lose like a minute and a half if you die. Um, and it usually doesn't happen because this level is not hard, but when it does, it's the worst feeling. Also, uh, there is a demo of this level in uh, hidden in Spyro the Dragon, because they were released around the same time. And in the demo version of this level in Spyro 1, there is a checkpoint in this section, so I have no idea why they got rid of it. 
I don't know why you would demo this level out of every level in the I, I think they wanted to show off, like, it, like technically, like, from a technical perspective, this is a very impressive level for a 1998 game. But, like, actually playing it, it's just, it's like a, it's a three-minute auto-scroller. It's so boring. I guess we've kind of gotten used to it after yeah. playing it so many times. And... Also, there's 60 crates in the demo instead of 61, and I have no idea which one is missing. Uh, but yeah, no, that's the first pass of Tunnel Tales. We gotta do the second pass, which is only a little bit shorter. Um, it's very important that I, like, what happens in this next time trial, what, what, if I leave it with two masks or less than two, is just gonna dictate the remainder of how I route the run. I've actually gotten so bored in this level, in uh, the remaster uh, collision, that I died and had to do it again at the end. Uh, so instead of being six minutes of... Uh, this, you have like 10. Yep. Always a good time. <laughs> this time trial can be kind of tight if you're not paying attention, but I usually break enough crates while also cutting enough corners that I usually have like a 10 second window. What's the timer? Uh, the gold is like 125, and I usually oh. get like a 115. The plat This is actually a really difficult platinum relic, like one of the hardest in the game. Um, it's like 105, and it's really dependent on how much these waves mess with you. Like, I I've gotten every Platinum and Relic in this game twice ever, and this has always been the one I do last, because it's just... It can be miserable. Naturally, we go over those crates, because why wouldn't we? This is the same in the remaster, where you have to pick, like, some crates along the way. Like, if you completely, like, ignore the time crates, then you're not gonna get it. Yeah, um... Which I've also done multiple times. Yeah, this is another runner of uh, this game in Crash 2, Groovy, where one time I was watching him do this level, and he didn't know what the time trial was, and he was just missing all the crates, and he was like, what, what is the goal time here? And I was like, 125, and he got like a 124. So, like, it's definitely something you have to pay a little bit of attention to. Uh, but otherwise, there's really not too much going on here, so we can get a donation in. Thank you very much. We have had a $20 donation from Doravon. No comment on that one, but that one's gone to the character choice of Yoshi. I respect it. Waluigi, Waluigi. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I if I do take a hit here, it's not the biggest deal. It just cha it's just two levels that I would save for the end of the run. I'm going to do early. Um, but I ideally, I'd like to not... Yeah, so I've got like 25, 20 seconds to work with, and there's not 20 seconds of level left, so. Alright, yeah, and we left with two masks, so I can do things the way I was planning. Yeah, like I said earlier in the run, Warp 4 is by far the most flexible warp room. I don't think anybody does this the same way. It's kind of just like have two masks for Tomb Waiter, and then just have two masks for like everything else. Alright, so, uh,. The next level is Future Frenzy, which is 19, but we're actually not entering it from this warp room. We're going to enter it from the sixth warp room. So you get this warp room when you have at least five relics, and then every button here unlocks for every five relics you have. And having 20 relics, which we just got through Tunnel Tales, unlocks this entrance to Future Frenzy, which is the only way you can get the box gem. So. You can see how that animation of going to warp six takes so long that it also adds that extra time save to doing the YGE that we did yeah, earlier in, in the run. In AMI. Because if you do YGE in your run, you need to go to warp 6 twice, but if you don't do it, you need to go 3 times. I always forget how late Ski Craze this in this yeah, version. Yeah, in, in the remake, there's no YGE. Okay, I'm gonna wait this out. We're gonna... I really don't want to lose this mask. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, in the remake, there's no YGE, so you just get 10 relics as quickly as possible to just do the yellow gem path. We did and actually almost lab it out. Yeah, there's, uh, there's just like a, there's like enough invisible walls that it's just like painful. But um, in, in the remake, because you do, uh, you go down to get the yellow gem, you just do ski crits early. Which is uh, nice because Ski Craze in this version of the game is uh, very terrifying, which we'll get to at the end of the run at this point. Right, we're gonna not, do, not get hit by that. Any little thing you can do here, you can use the, the width of the Death Tornado spin to not crawl under that section. Alright, so this is the most obnoxious backtracking section in 
the run. Uh, I do not want to get hit here, and there's a bunch of lasers that want to hit me, so. Fortunately, this is actually one spot where I appreciate having sound effects on because I can listen for the laser sound effect. When I'm doing, like, PB attempts and I have sound effects off, I have to just, like, kind of guess. You can also, like, Death Tornado spin around these, but it's, like, really awkward, so I'd, I'd rather just play it safe and win them out. Except for this one, I'll do this one. I think it's slightly disturbing not having SFX on, like it when watching you or other people run it. Just like, yeah. So it's it feels weird. It's interesting because like as time, like whenever someone first watches the game, that's like the common consensus. Like it's so weird not having SFX on, and then like you get used to it, and then I feel like a lot of runners actually prefer the game with SFX off, and I feel like I'm one of the ones who doesn't. Like obviously I will when I'm going for a PB because it's like a free minute to a minute and a half time save. Um, but like for a marathon, I think it's way more entertaining to have the sound effects on. All right, so I have 70 crates here, which is correct. Um, so that section, that's actually the beginning of the level if you were to enter it from level 19. Um, yeah, the, the, the two future levels are very odd with how they're set up. Triple's nice for just like dodging all of these obstacles. These levels are so cool, thematically, too. I mean. Yeah. They, ha they have one of the, the best songs in the game. The OST and all of the original trilogy is good. Uh, 89 is also correct. Not as good as Wrath of Cortex, though. Wrath of Cortex does have a banging soundtrack. Why? Cra Crash games in general just have like really good soundtracks. Like the PS1 games, Wrath of Cortex, Twin Sanity, Nitro Kart. Even Crash 4, like, just consistently good songs. The little hint that he is saying, Wrath of Cortex next, please. <laughs> Alright, that's not too much I feel with this level. That, that doesn't matter. The, the next level I'm doing after this takes masks anyway, so I can be pretty liberal with them. And I believe it's only those type of levels that take away masks yeah. in this version. Yeah, in the remake, any level where the mask would be useless usually gets taken away. But in this version, it's just like the two levels, the level I'm about to do. In remakes, it's playing in motorcycle. Yeah. I believe. That's what I think so. Yeah. yeah playing in motorcycle. And engine. Yeah, which is kind of plain. <laughs> kind of. A spaceship. <laughs> What is spaceship if not a plane? You're right. Yeah. yeah so this is Bye Bye Blimps. Uh, this is the first of three plane levels, and the goal of this is that I have to get this cutscene that I forgot was there. Uh, <laughs> um, so I have to break down all seven of these blimps, and that's how you beat the level. I'm going to follow a very specific path to get all the crates at the same time. Uh, the way the plane works here is actually very different from how it is in the remake. So anytime I'm not holding a direction, uh, the, my aiming just goes back to center. So ideally, I just want to line myself up with these blimps and then just go neutral. Like that. This is like a deceptively easy level to lose time in if you're just like not paying attention to like how you line yourself up with the blimps like that. Like I just lost time there. I do believe this is one off, if not Rico's favorite soundtrack. Uh, not this version. The, uh, well, Mad Bombers. Yeah, so yeah. The, the sister level of this uh, level is in War 5 called Mad Bombers, and they actually have slightly different songs. And I am the only human on Earth that loves the Mad Bombers music, just because it has really good marching snare, and everybody else tells me it's really boring, and I just don't agree. We're not going to be able to hear it because the sound effects are just really loud, but... Yeah, I can barely hear the difference between the two versions, too, so... <laughs> yeah, Th this one has, like, a bit more, like, a lighthearted feel to it, whereas uh, the Mad Bombers one is like, a lot more frantic, which fits the level. I also, I have a background in marching band, so I'm, like, really big on, like, snare drums and stuff. Alright, so that's the last crystal in this warp room. So we're going to do the next boss fight and then the last two time trials in the warp room. Uh, so yeah, this is Engine. Um, in my opinion, if this is not the single best boss fight in the entire Crash series, it is up there. This is just so well done, and I just don't think any other subsequent game has topped it. So in this fight, you, you actually play as Coco, and you have to destroy every piece of Engine's mech. 
Just the entire setup and presentation of this fight is incredible. That was really good first phase. By the way, there's two phases of this fight. So after you destroy his first mech, he gets into a second one, and then Pura comes in and helps you. This is a really easy to like lose a lot of health here. Yeah, it's also like um, it's easy to lose a lot of time if you're just not fast about destroying these shoulders. Yeah, every rocket deals 10%. So. It's not usually a threat, but if you get if you lose a lot of health in the first phase, it can be a little terrifying. With this boss, there's always a set pattern. For example, in phase one, after you shoot both both arms, um, I pretty I think it's the right one, the right shoulder one will always stay open uh, instead of just alternating. Between you know, yeah. open and close. Yeah, there, there's a bit of like randomness that sometimes like the shoulders just don't open, but it's mostly a consistent fight. And yeah, that that one that went really well, just going off of the music cues. So I'm very happy with that. Really weird how he, like shakes when you kill one of his uh, like the top ones. Oh, I, yeah, I, I could have I could have gone for the bug and glitch again, but th this is not a hard one. So, and I'm pretty sure at least in NSC, so in second phase engine, the the shoulders. Uh, they open like from right to left, and I think in NSD is the opposite, right? No, it's like just they can open however. Is it? Yeah, they don't need to go in like order if that's what you meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and we cool. don't do that fight. <laughs> so yeah. anything other than 108, so. best category. Um. So I might be wrong. It's been years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is. It's been years for me also actually at this point. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I used to run a lot of the the, rem the remakes equivalent, 108. percent I actually used to not like this category. Like when I first started running it, it was like very frustrating. It made me so mad. And then, like some point at the beginning of the pandemic, I just started running this more seriously, and it, it grew on me. And now this is probably my favorite category in the original trilogy. That was a really good. Bye bye blimps. I haven't gotten a 38 in a long time. I usually get like 40 to 42. Glad I practiced that. All right, so we got one more relic here. I intentionally saved Future Frenzy's relic for last because even though the first level in War Five you don't you don't get triple because there's no mask in it. It's just nice to have masks for just safety and some optimization. There's not too much going on with this time trial, so we can fit in a donation or any messages. Thank you very much, Rico. We have a $35 donation from Softnum, who just says, Yoshi! You've probably guessed it. That one's going to the Yoshi character choice, and that means that Yoshi has now sniped that top spot from Waluigi, $186 to $180. Remember, that one is closing at the end of this run and just before the next one, where we're going to see Mario Party superstars here at ESA Winter. Yoshi's pretty cool, too. Well, accepted. We'll accept it. <laughs> Yo, Yoshi in melee is hype. Shout out to Anza. Sorry, I had, I had to bring Smash Bros into this. If you guys have the Rico bingo card, you can cross that one out. <laughs> cross off the Smash <laughs> reference. How long? I, I have like about like 30 minutes, I think. What, what's the timer at? I can't see it. Uh, It's at 1.37. But yeah, so we got like 30, 40 minutes. So that's enough time to throw in a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. <laughs> There, there are times where I'll just, like in chat, I'll just get into like a really like long-winded conversation on Yu-Gi-Oh with like one viewer, and then like everybody else is just like, we we can't contribute to this. This one reference you're missing, actually. Which one? Twins. Oh yeah, true. How long until someone asks for a Twin Sanity remake again? <laughs> for clarification, Twin Sanity is my favorite Crash game, and it's also my favorite game to run. Uh, shout out to Joester98 who did the 100% uh, run at ESA Summer, which was awesome. Um, but uh, every time I run that game, someone brings up, oh, I hope they remake this game, and I'm actually one of the people who doesn't want a remake of it, despite it being my favorite Crash game. All right, so that's all of Warp 4. So what, all we have left now is Warp 5 and the remainder of Warp 6. All right, so we're going to enter Flaming Passion. This is the only platforming level that in the normal pass has no masks. 
So there's no triple you can get here, but you can still use the mask either for safety or just for some slight optimization in the bonus. Go over this. So this is the one level in the run that has a death route that we don't one cycle, so I have to be very careful to not die here. I kind of consider this level the equivalent to Piston It Away in Crash 2, where like there's a death route that you like you have to not die in the level for. This is also like one of my favorite levels from like a design perspective. I just think it's like really clean platforming. This is one of my favorites too. Yeah, it's it's very good at like effectively using all the power ups. I can do a little body slam here to skip that. This is the first use of the bazooka, which we got from Engine. This, so when we finish this death route, it's gonna spit us out to the end where that sword guy is. So to stop from backtracking for that uh, crate, we just shoot it with the bazooka. Uh, the bazooka is an interesting power up. Casually, it's really good. Uh, in the speed run, it's not that useful because it requires stopping in place to use it. But there are like fringe scenarios like right there where they where you use it. And that was Green Gem, which we'll need for the level after this, Gone Tomorrow. I guess the one thing we didn't touch on with the Death Tornado Spin is that you can actually zigzag during that as well, and it carries you even farther than normal. Okay. Uh, I was going to plan on death or damage boosting twice in this uh, bonus. We'll only have to do one. Yeah, so there's nitros in this level, but there's no nitro detonator, and the reason for that, like this level and Gone Tomorrow are both like that, and they did that because they want you to use the bazooka. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do a spin or a bounce here. I didn't get it, so that's fine. At I, least they could have put like the bazooka symbol like they usually do with the other power ups in the bonus. Yeah. Because like this is just the biggest troll bonus. Because I don't think there's, at least in the platforming crash games, there's nothing. Like this, uh, like this bonus, or this level. Every level like has a nitro that they. Yeah, I do think yeah. it's really weird for them to just like. Yeah, the the only other one is uh, gone tomorrow. Like I said. Yeah. Even oh. like bug light has a nitro detonator. So. With like without a hint to just throwing it at you and. Yeah. Then, I think most people would just like pass them and then like ex expect it. Yeah. Yeah, so if I had gotten that uh, Nitro Bounce on that second set, I would have used the Master Damage Juice on the last one, because that's the one that takes the longest time to hit with the Zika. Thankfully, this time trial does have masks, so fine. Or not. <laughs> Even though, like, Triple Mask is very important and, like, is very fast, um, it's not, like, a make-or-break situation outside of, like, a couple one cycles where you really need, like, the couple seconds. Um, most, tri most triples, if you miss them, you're only losing, like, five seconds or so. Oh. So I, w I would normally have triple here, but I took a hit at the beginning, so. But again, I'm only probably going to lose, like, five seconds for it. Have a stare down with that guy because uh, I want to hit him again. <laughs> he didn't care about you. He was turned he, around. Yeah, he was just like, all right, man, you got it. All right. And uh, so the next level is going to be gone tomorrow. It's the other future level. It's also got some really weird backtracking. I don't think it's as egregious as Future Frenzy, but it's still a bit odd. It's a pretty long level as a result. I actually have the opinion of, like, I don't like the future levels in uh, completion. But no, that's very fair, actually. Like, I think their their core level design is cool, but the requirements for completing them are pretty annoying. I, I do like future tents in the remake, which is, like, the, the bonus level they added. Wrong opinion. <laughs> I have a lot of those, apparently. Future tense in the PC version would be a lot better if it didn't crash. Um, yeah, so uh, this is this isn't like the most important triple because like you can't use the bazooka in triple, so I have to come back for these crates anyway. Uh, if I hadn't had the triple here, I would have just shot the exclamation crate with the bazooka and then just waited. So it's like it's only like a few seconds difference. 
But yeah, so I skipped five crates there uh, because the exclamation point for the top one is in the green jump path, which is very late in the level, so I'm going to have to come back here. Like, you essentially have to do this level twice to get the uh, the box jump. Shout out to you, Chatters, asking why he skipped those five boxes right now. <laughs> Like, you saw Rico there at the beginning of this uh, horizontal section leave the checkpoint. Uh, because this level only has checkpoints. Uh, at least in the original, uh, the bonus doesn't count as a checkpoint once you do it. Uh, so it's just safer to leave the first checkpoint because you have two masks. And in case that if you just break both checkpoints as you pass by it, if you die or you miss a box, uh, you have to repeat this whole section again. Yeah, any death in this level is punishing just by the nature of it. But saving the second checkpoint for after, or after, saving the first checkpoint for after I've done this gem path, uh, minimizes it as much as it can. Like, it's still like if I die at the end of the level, it's still like a minute of time lost. But that's better than like you know dying and losing like three minutes or something. So 49, and then I'll sh should have 54 here. That's indeed how math works. Um, yeah, so we just go back through the part I just did and just clean up any crates I missed. Another crate that the uh, exclamation uh, box triggered is I skipped a bunch of crates up here. And that's because these two below this like metal bridge are also outlying crates and uh, you cannot hit them without the TNT. So let's go. Yes. Not nice. All right, so I'll use the bazooka for this part. Or oh. Okay. Let's uh. Uh. Okay. uh I that, yeah. That, I don't think there was a solution to that. What even happened? Uh, I think when I. Oh, okay. Um, I think I blew up the nitro before the. Oh was yes. Bomb. The exclamation crate. I'm gonna not do that again. <laughs> An annoying thing with the bazooka is it can actually hit Wumper Fruit, so sometimes it takes like multiple hits to, for this to work. Yeah, this level and Flaming Fashion are both like in the later stages. It's not the worst thing to not have masks, but it's inconvenient. Alright, so there should be one more crate up here. Yeah, so I should have 81 at the end of the size 1 section. Because there's 6 at the end. There's 3 in the... yeah. Yeah, because of the 3 here and the 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 3 apart and the 3 stacked. Right? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to wait this out just because it's it would be extremely bad to die here. And I have done that many times, so... I'm going to wait this guy out as well. I think you're supposed to shoot that guy with the bazooka, but you can just spin him. I don't think I've ever seen anyone bazooka for that guy. It was a casual thing. Uh, I uh, yeah, as a kid, I always thought you had to shoot him. He has a huge... Uh... Yeah, huge target. Oh, so yeah. Like, yeah, bazooka. All right, so this is actually one of my favorite time trials. It's not a one cycle because it actually has four masks in it. So you get triple twice and you just fly through the level. Uh, but I have to get through uh, this precarious section first. Uh, while I'm doing this, we can read a donation. Thank you very much. We have had $50 coming from Looney, who says, Couldn't donate much, but still wanted to contribute with such a great cause. This one's for you, Grandma. And that one's gone to the Yoshi Bid War as well. Thank you so much for that very generous donation. It's going to make a huge, huge difference to trying to eradicate Alzheimer's and find a cure for it. Every small contribution matters. Yeah, definitely. Also, if we could get a a five dollar train, if everyone in chat donated five dollars, it'd be a lot. Even if it was just one. Even if it was just one. All right, so yeah, this is the first triple, and we're just gonna fly through this level. Um, this conveniently carries to the entire side-scrolling section. So, outside of like dropping a slide and falling into a hole, I really don't have to worry about a death here.
How does that work? And if everyone who donates five dollars can put it to crash so that we get to see crash tomorrow and not Coco, yeah, that would be a, amazing. That's a good idea. Yeah. Don't yeah. do that. Don't do that. I think we need a five dollar boggle train. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, chat. Let's do it. Let's get a five dollar boggle train before this run ends. Boggle. <laughs> yeah. So the second triple here is much shorter, but it lets me just go through everything at the end of the level without worrying about it. All right. So we have one more platforming level and then five vehicles. Um. So. Already kind of closing in on the end. Yeah. It goes by pretty quickly, actually. All right, so this is Bug Light. Um, this is home to, next to Tomb Time, the hardest one cycle in the game. And this one I am actually capable of doing, so uh, we'll be doing that after this first visit. But uh, this level reintroduces the Firefly gimmick from Crash 2 that you only see in like level 23 and level 27 of that game. Uh, we don't see it at the beginning here because it's like lighted a little bit, but like the moment we enter this section, everything goes dark. And this is also a level that has two triple masks. Uh, this one's nice because it just keeps these door cycles open. So that this is the multicolored gem path. I need all five colored gems to do it. We'll come back for it for the one cycle. I do have all five colored gems now. The last one's green. Um, also, this section, they just give you three masks. Um, so this is like kind of like the really nice one where like if you just have no mask, you will just immediately have a triple. Like a little awkward movement. I can feel my hands and shoulders like starting to wear out a bit, so I hope I'm able to do the one cycle because it does not have a lot of uh, window of error. We believe in you. I got tomb time, so I can get this, right? Uh, literally what I was just about to say. So this bonus was a little funny, where sometimes stuff just doesn't load in. I had, like, a really hilarious one earlier in the week when I was practicing, where, like, half the bonus just, like, was deloaded. I was, like, trying to, like, jump through, like, a, a Mario Maker level. Yeah, that's the green firefly. What? I've never noticed that. It's if you do the bonus fast enough, and you get to the end, with still the Firefly from the beginning. The Firefly is going to be green. Oh, I damaged it to try to keep this door open, but the door had other plans, I guess. And after this point, like, conserving masks is completely useless because I'm going to have, ma like, the time trial, I can't keep them anyway, and then everything from this point is a vehicle. So, uh, assuming all goes well, that is the last instance of uh, Triple Mask. It was a nice uh, almost two hours of bongos. All right, so I'm going to need every ounce of focus for uh, this one cycle because there, there is almost no room for error in the first, like, 40 seconds of it, I want to say. There's, like, just the tiniest bit of leeway. Uh, you can afford, with good movement, you can afford to miss one second. But I feel like Riku's just going to, yeah. if you miss one second, you're going to start. Yeah, so I reset the trial there to just have the consistent cycle. This, th these door cycles have to be consistent because they define the entire one cycle. Uh, already not looking great. I know, okay, fine. Uh, this is, I'm gonna go again. Really slow. I really want to show this off, so. We're looking really good on time, so you have some time to try it. This is the Firefly there, I should be fine. Oh, we're like really behind. That's probably not going to be enough. 27-13. Okay, I think you got, in practice, you got 2640. Okay, now the double jump there's it. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna go for it one more time, and if it goes wrong, I'll just uh, go for the relic and then reset trial. Alright, that's probably it. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just gonna go through this, and no matter what happens. This is like a very rough one, so a combination of nerves and just fatigue from the length of the road. This is very easy for it to just go wrong. 
I, I, can, I can tell just try to do it. That like my move is not there right now. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make yeah. this door cycle, so we'll just wait it out. Yeah, like, like I said, the door cycles like determine this entire one cycle. Um, like I have that door cycle right there. I have to be able to pass that in order for this to be realistically possible. Once I get there, though, like it's pretty lenient. But yeah, the the gold relic time for this level is 134.80, and my best is like a 132. So that is just how little leeway there is for this. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep this mask because I'm gonna have to like wait through stuff anyway. You usually burn the mask on the nitro here to keep this door open, but I'd rather just have this for the next section. This is one of those one cycles that I like to show it off, so it's like a bit disappointing when it goes wrong, but I also, I can't realistically be mad because it is hard. This is actually one that I didn't start doing until, I want to say like six months ago, like, I was at SGDQ and another 105 runner, Nitrovsky, was like just spent the first few days teaching it to me. And like, if it wasn't for him, I just, I don't think I'd be able to do this. But yeah, no, I, ideally I want to like hit that red gem platform at like 120 to 122. So I lost over 10 seconds just off of door cycles. That's just how brutal this can be. Yeah, normally I would leave the level, but we're gonna death abuse to just go back to the beginning and get the relic. We get one more bongos as a result. That that was the real plan all along. I just really wanted to hear the bongos one more time. Yeah, that, that that is one of those one cycles that like, when you're on a pace, it's like the most tense thing ever. Could probably read a donation now if you have yeah, any. Yeah, definitely go for it. No problem. We have twenty dollars from Alex Twenty Five. He says donating towards a good cause. We also had five dollars from Kenny Cruel, who says boggle, and we also have another five dollars from Bacon Santa, who says choo choo. Let's get that five dollar train going, chat. We still have time to add more to that total. Yep, you got five more levels after this, and the final boss. That is so, a wild use. So, Bacon Santa. Yeah, so these are the uh, the bongos of shame, because uh, I only get them when I fail the one cycle. I don't know, like that. That's one of those one cycles where, like, when I'm like doing a race or like a, a multi-game run, I don't. I just don't even bother with it. It saves like a minute, but if you fail it, it loses like at least two. I want to say. So, yeah, no, that that is absolutely one of the hardest strats in the game. So I cannot really be that upset about not getting it. I gave it a good like three tries, and like after the third try, it's kind of just like, yeah, this is where. All right, so that is the last platformer. So we just have two vehicle levels in this warp room and three in warp room six. Uh, so this is the third of four motorcycle levels. Uh, this is orange asphalt. This is actually the most lenient one in terms of actually winning the race. You can make like two or three big mistakes and still have enough time. This is also the only motorcycle level where we don't intentionally one-cycle it. Um, it doesn't really make a difference whether or not you get the gem on the first pass or the second pass. So usually what's done is uh, you try to get the gem on the first pass and if you miss a crate you just keep going. There's a particular like wacky spot where you have two ramps back to back and usually I think if you have too, too much speed once you go towards the second ramp, you can easily go over the yeah. two boxes, one box? Yeah, there's one box on each ramp, and if you go too fast, it's very easy to just, uh, just fly right over the second one. And even sometimes when you think you've slowed down enough, you'll just go over it. So, like, just for safety's sake, you usually just try to get the gem on the first pass. Uh, it's these two ramps coming up here. If everything goes well, then after the second ramp, I should have 14 crates. I went under it. Under. I went. I went too slow. Okay. Okay. We're gonna one cycle this, I guess. I don't think I've ever seen that. I, I think I've seen it like once or twice before. Suffering from success, just <laughs> over calculating how much I have to slow down. That means I can do something here at the end of the level that I normally wouldn't do in the time trial because it's very risky to mess up. Which is, uh, I can do some pull skips at the end of this level.
Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so I I don't like going for those whole skips in the time trial because the time trial is not tight, but it's t it's not so generous that I if I fail those whole skips along with missing all of the time crates on those last ramps, it's very easy to miss the gold relic. So I usually just only go for it if I'm forced to one cycle and I just do it in the crystal class. All right, now I gotta like really pay attention. It's a little disappointing because there's another hole skip er pretty early on that I wanted to show off, but it's very risky to do when you're trying to get the box gem, so we're just gonna not be able to show it. Yeah, so you can actually hole skip and over this ramp and then carry the turbo for like much further than normal, but it's very easy to just miss this crate right here if you go for it, so better to just not. Can you not hold skip on the right side? No, it's like you do the right side, but like the, the turning is still like oh, hard okay, enough yeah. that it's just weird. Right. Okay, that's oh. got it. <laughs> that time that it looked like it might have been, it. Yeah, yeah. It looked like it would have been too high, but I, I heard it break, and then 14 again is correct there, so. We should be good now. Although I have seen people miss crates on the, the last ramp, so let's see what happens. It would be funny if this, of all motorcycle levels, was the one that went wrong, because it's definitely the easiest one, despite being in Warp Room 5. But it's uh, levels of difficulty, right? Warp Group 1 is level 1. And yeah, and yeah. Up. This one, and then... Yeah. It really looked like you missed someone the first one. Yeah, it's very, uh, very odd. Alright, yeah. So, we got one more motorcycle level after this, but it's uh, a little bit away. Yeah, we have one more motorcycle level, two more plane, plane levels, levels, one, and two one about to do. Yeah, and one jet ski. Yeah, so this is Mad Bombers. This is the sister level of Bye Bye Blimps. It is significantly harder, and casually, it's honestly a nightmare. Next to Road Crash, this probably blocks people from being. Uh, in the run, though, I think it's really cool because the routing is very specific. So I immediately turn right here, uh, break this balloon, and then this balloon. And then this plane is right up. So this is harder because even though there's only five like bomber planes you have to break down, they're moving targets and you have to break both of the propellers. So it's essentially you have ten targets even though there's only five planes. Also, the AI in this level like tears through your health. Like I'm at 42 per 34 percent and I've been here for like 30 seconds. And uh, this route is scary because uh, that uh, health crate like in the upper left there. Uh, right after this next plane is the last health crate in the level. So this is a very fast route, but it's a very risky one. Yeah, so I get a little hits there. That way when I turn around here after this last crate, it doesn't take as long to break this guy down. Yeah, so conveniently these guys only shoot at you when they're in front of you. So if they're like behind you, then you don't have to worry about them, which is uh, not something they did in Wrath of Cortex. Uh, shout outs to level 18 in that game. Yeah, I don't know how well you can hear the uh, the music, but uh, I'm digging the, the snare drum right now. Alright, one more crate, one more plane. We got 80% health, so we should be good. Yeah, because they started to shoot at me, and the, movement, the moment I moved the camera, they just stopped. That was pretty all right. Like I said, this is one of the levels where I would prefer having an analog stick, but I just don't have a controller with a good D-pad and a good stick, so. All right, so because that was the last crystal, we have to enter the final boss fight, but we don't have to actually beat it. So we're going to enter the boss fight and immediately leave it, and then uh, all the buttons will reappear. Final boss time, woo! 
Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Cortex. Hi, Cortex. So for some reason, when you have SFX off, you don't have to skip the cutscene where he's like groaning at you. So you pause as his chin is just like pulled, held up like that, and you just see that as the level's fading out. But with SFX on, you have to actually skip the cutscene. I don't know why. So for the time trial for this, I grab the clock and then just immediately turn around. I move in this direction a little bit, and then when that plan on the left is off screen for a few seconds, I just turn this way. That was really fast. Sometimes the, the bullets like to not register, and like you could be hitting these planes point blank and they're just like not getting hit. It's been very solid so far. And then I'm gonna like fly in between these two planes, that way when they turn I'm still a little closer to the one on the left. Alright, I'm probably gonna have to get a health upgrade after this. This one I feel like is another time trial where it's difficult to get flat casually if you get too much jank. Yeah, it's uh, very cycle heavy. If, you, if you're just slow on one of these plane cycles, you can lose upwards of like 20 seconds. Like my, my best here are like 115s or something and then like my worst can be like 130s. I can do this with 50% health. What's the relic time in? Uh, 135 is the plat. Oh. The gold is 155. Oh. Pretty lenient, though. Yeah. Yeah, sub anything that's sub 120 is good for me, so that was a very solid relic. And you can hear the song a little bit now. I, I will say, I think a lot of the reason like this song is hated so much is that all every single rip of it on YouTube is missing instruments. So it sounds really boring when you listen to it on YouTube. If you listen to it in-game with SFX off, it is so much better. Uh, but yeah, that's all of Warp Room 5. So we just have three levels in Warp Room 6. So normally, the first level you should do optimally here is level 30, just because of where you get spit out in this Warp Room. I'm going to end with level 30 just because it's the least risky one, and it's also the coolest one. So like, the level that I'm doing now is normally the level I would end this Warp Room with, but it's also the hardest one, so I'm just going to get it out of the way. This is Area 51. It is a nighttime motorcycle level. Also pretty hated casually, but I think, like, it's one of those levels where once you know what you're doing, it's so cool. It's not too hard to figure out either. Yeah. There's no, like, really difficult, like, box formations or anything. It's just kind of knowing, like, because you have such a limited field of view. Um, but, like, after a certain point, I'm definitely going to have to focus. Uh, this, this early part's not too bad, but like after the first ramp, it starts to become a bit tricky. So instead of racers, you're now racing UFOs. Or instead of cars, I guess. And they can also move straight into you and knock you out. Yeah, so if you're ever wondering what's in the Area 51 base in the United States, it's uh, two gems and a relic. <laughs> so drop the turbo there, that way I, it's, it's kind of awkward to get around this guy if you don't. This next section here is where it gets a little scary because I'm going to try and carry a turbo through like five crates. And the turning when you're turboing is uh, not the greatest. But uh, yep, that was all three, so 13 is correct here. This is probably the level where I have like crate counts memorized the most because it's just so important. You seem to have a good handle of most of them because you're, when you check and yeah. recognize, that's something I've always been bad at. Like. It, it's a, it's especially count. important for this game because when you run sound effects off, you don't have the sound cue to work with. So like you really have to know crate counts for levels where like you might not have broken it. In another game, I feel like it's important. It's like the GBA ones, yeah, which I can definitely. never remember. So this crate here likes to just like blindside. You just like you have like a second to hit it when when it comes into view. Uh, yeah, no, this has been a really good Area 51, so it's just this last section here, which sometimes they can they can mess with you, but it should be fine. Alright, we're good. This might be a flat. Uh, no, I think I just barely missed it. It's like a 143-something, I think. Just kidding. Oh, I got it. It's, it's a low 144. Oh. That, that's, a, that's a really nice one to get a flat with, because the time between the flat and the gold is very small. Also, with these, like, enter your initials uh, scenes, you're supposed to, like, just skip to done, but sometimes you, like, overpress or, like, 
it just doesn't register an input, so you just lose a little bit of time just entering like AAA or VVV or. All right, so uh, the next level is Ski Craze. It's the last jet ski level. I hate this level. Um, at least in the speedrun. Casually, I think design-wise, it's cool, and in the remake, it's completely fine. But this this is the level where the the wave cycles uh, are just at their most cruel. Like it's very easy to just like fly over a crate if you just get the wrong wave cycle or if you're not paying attention. And this is definitely one of the tightest gold relics. Um, if everything goes well, you have like a 15 second window because it's like you can get like 35s and the gold relic is 50 50. Uh, but if you miss any crate, you're losing like five seconds. So th there is so little like room for error with this one. And it's very long, so it's like a two minute time loss if you miss anything. Design wise, this is probably one of my favorite levels. Yeah, it, it's really cool because it's, it's, it's very linear even compared to like some of the other jet ski levels. Uh, and that's really cool because you can just like fly through it. Um, but, you know, when you're trying to get the gold relic and break every crate at the same time, it's terrifying. It's why like a lot of runners, even though it's technically optimal to save this in Area 51 for the end, it's like a few seconds difference, so a lot of people at like mid to high level just save to do these before Future Frenzy for that reason. I actually kind of like doing this at the end though, because when I'm like doing attempts, if I do Ski Craze like early and I fail it, I just don't want to finish the run. If it's at the end of the run, at least I like finished like most of the run at that point. So that's another reason I started doing it at the end. And I think that helped in the long run because it helped me play the game more often. Yeah, like at about this point, there's so many time crates that as long as you don't miss any, this timer is like not going to unfreeze. Oh, I am nice. a little surprised I got that. Yeah. <laughs> that that ramp's a little weird. With that angle, I and then that I that wave. So yeah, no, this is this is uh, ski craze doing its uh, magic, but we should still be fine. Depending on how fast you go and how fast you back up uh, missing a box like that. I feel like you can probably miss up to three yeah. boxes and then still it, get it, It's one. dependent on how much time you lose for missing a crate, but like, it, it's really scary. Just because like, sometimes it's also really hard to like get back onto a ramp when you miss. So like here, I'm gonna slow down a bit. And then this ramp's fun because there's four crates on it and somehow I got all of them. And slow to, like some, something that I think I started to do here that made this level way more consistent for me is that I slow down on like every ramp. That has helped a lot with not missing crates, but sometimes the wave still just gets you. Yeah, yeah because no? the most common thing is for you to go over the boxes. Yeah, no, overall, aside way. from like the one missed crate, that was an extremely clean ski crate, so I'm happy with that. So I just never noticed that he says in front of the times. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so we have one more level, um, and despite being a vehicle level, because the vehicle levels are a bit of like a contentious point in the Crash fandom, it's like, do they add to the game? Do they detract from it? Uh, I used to be on the side that like they detracted from the game, but as time has gone on, I've grown pretty fond of most of them, and this one is actually like, next to Tomb Raider, this might be my second favorite level in the game. So this is Rings of Power. This is a plane level that is a race instead of like a, a shoot 'em, like up. Uh, so every time you spin through one of these rings, you get a massive speed boost. So the rings are not solid, but the airplanes are, so I'm a little glad I didn't hit that guy. Unlike in Wrath of Cortex, where the rings are solid yeah. and annoying. Yeah. <laughs> also, the, the background mountains in this level look like uh, cookie dough, which is great. So most of these rings, it's very safe to just go full speed. At about this point, I start to slow down a little bit, just because this section is very tight otherwise. So there's a, there's a bit of a meme in my stream community where I know exactly what the gold time is in this level. It is 101.43, because one time I got 101.43 here, and the Crash Bandicoot wiki beforehand said it was 101.46. And if you tie a gold relic, or if you tie a relic time in this game, you don't get the relic. So I saw 101.46 on my splits, and then I got the Sapphire Relic. So because of that, I just know what the time is. So you can see there's no buttons here. Uh, that means I have collected everything, and the only thing I can do now is the final boss. Um, so that is every gold relic, unless I missed one, which I don't think I did. 
Um, so the last gem is going to be right in front of Coco here when I step in front of her. And there it is, fireworks. Uh, just to clarify, 104%. The last uh, percent is from the running shoes power-up you get for this fight. So we have everything. Craig just smashed a button with all my might. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually like, it's not like a super complex boss fight, but I think like the setup and presentation for it is really cool. Like you're facing down Cortex while Aku Aku are having a duel. Music is really Yeah, good the music too. adds so much to it. Like the marimba that they added compared to like the older Crash games is so good. These mines are fantastic. What? <laughs> So the way he throws the mines are random, and sometimes they're just really clean like that, and other times they're like all in front of him, and there's like no way you can get to him. I wonder if I'll be lucky and get the thing I got twice yesterday, where he put a mine directly in front of the the hole, and then he just lands in front, like hops off it and lands in the hole. Yeah. So the, the thing that Aku Aku and Uku do here do here is a set pattern, so I know exactly what to do for every part of it. The only part that's random really is these mines. The little sibling fight. Yeah, this part is not... That was not as good of a mind setup. Alright. I like the sound that when you so hit good, Cortex so in this. Yeah. It sounds like you <laughs> Yeah, so this last phase, they're always going to, like, spin wherever Crash is and let off a huge explosion. So I just bait them into the corner and just move out of the way. Also, the explosion is, like, huge in this game. In the Insane Trilogy, it's really small. But they also do it four times in the Insane Trilogy because Cortex fires a lot slower. All right, this is this might work. Let's see. I'm just nice. Out. Let's go. And time. Yeah. So that was uh, Crash Bandicoot 3, 105 uh, percent. What was the 214? That's really good considering yeah. how many times I fail, failed uh, Bug Light. That is yeah, really so solid. My, my PB is a 207. I generally average a 211. So add in the minute for SFX, it's the 212. Yeah, that's a really good time. We had a pretty good time trial, except for Bug Light, I don't think we had any jank or death yeah. time trials. Yeah. Did really, really good. Yeah, I also, I really like uh, playing this cutscene at the end with the SFX. Uh, so I'm just gonna let this play out for a bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks to my uh, commentators, Cooking and Merkaz. Uh, really appreciate having you guys here to help me explain the game. Uh, shout out to ESA for letting me uh, have this in the event. It's been a blast traveling to Europe. I haven't left the United States in like almost 20 years before this, and it's just been really fun visiting Sweden. Uh, shout outs to the entire PlayStation Nation and everybody behind us who's been supporting me. Shout outs to my stream community. Um, I actually just very recently in the last month went full time with streaming, and it's only because of you guys' support that I'm even able to pursue that. So please know that I appreciate everything you guys do for me. Um, but yeah, no, if you want to watch more Crash, uh, we got two more Crash runs, one tomorrow with Cookie with Crash 4, and then Merkaz on Friday with the remake of this game. Uh, if you want to see more Crash in general, or if you want to learn the games, you can join the discords that are linked on screenon.com. If you want to watch me run any of them, I run like almost every game in this series, um, and I stream every day again because I'm full-time, so you can follow me at Rico underscore KSB. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that was Crash Bandicoot 3. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for that incredible run, Rico. We are really glad you did make that trip over to show us this amazing run. Don't go anywhere, though. Coming up next, we are going to have Shigun running Mario Party Superstars. We're going to go to a quick intermission. We will be back soon.